So, um, let's uh, let's be very so. Uh, a couple notes before we go. So, um, I don't know what. I, uh, so originally, the first thing was a Windows update. This was just a different messed up thing that happened where it said like there was a critical error that happened. It might be tied to the game, so I, I made another save copy here, and then I went forward for like a while. Like I skipped for a while, and nothing happened. So, if something does happen, then it probably means there's something wrong with this game and the way it's interacting with Twitch. Or I may need to, uh, you know... I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll stream a different game. If you guys want to see me stream a different game, I can maybe do that. But we'll see. But anyway, we're going to try this. We're going to try this. We're back. We're back with Adstra. Oh, well, maybe. I haven't done Stellaris in a while. Okay, yeah, let's fucking... Let's a fucking go! So last time I'll see you. The corners of Amicus's mouth, we read that. Well, I suppose it's up to you with unlimited access to the stretch. Like that. I don't even have to think about it. Yeah. Amicus's smile widens. I would as win. I mean, you're my friend, and I'd want to hear about the results of your empire. But then Amicus's smile falters and then turns into a frown. What? The wolf is quiet for a moment, then his ears flatten. I uh, forgot Fidis and you're here in the first place. For a moment, I don't know what he's talking about. Then I do. We're not even supposed to know each other exists. Exists? Is that, I don't know. I don't, that might not be an editing mistake. I don't know for sure. This whole thing is against the law. What? What? I don't have the right to fall in love with hunky space man wolves? I, I can't do that? Yo. If I ain't free to do that, then none of us are free. Oh, so I guess we shouldn't be able to do that, huh? We, we, we wouldn't be able to do that, huh? Amicus bites his lip and shakes his head. We'll figure it out, but now is not the time for that. We have a trial to win. Amicus turns to me and after a little hesitation pulls me into a quick side hug, carefully avoiding the black patter on my arm. We'll talk more afterwards over a celebratory dinner, alright? The absolute confidence and reassurance in Amicus's voice calms me just a little. I manage a small smile. Alright. Good. And, uh, a little more celebration after that, if you get the my meaning. I'd almost forgotten about that. Amicus. If you want, if you want. Amicus chuckles before his ears perk up, his personal calm talking to him in a quiet, babbling sound. All, all right, that's my cue. Head to the dining room if you'd like to watch. Otherwise, Calm will tell you when to leave for the third room. Alright. I nod and give Amicus, and Amicus gives me one last pat on the shoulder before turning away. Oh god, I don't know if I, I don't know if I have Bannerlord. Um, good luck. I know you're gonna do great. Amicus waves at me before walking out the door, leaving me alone to wait. I move to the bed and sit down, carefully resting my arms out to the side, wishing that they'd applied the makeup a little closer to the dance so I don't have to walk around like a scarecrow. I realize pretty quickly that sitting here in silence is only making me more nervous, so I slowly get up, making my way to the main hall. As per usual, the halls are empty. The only people living here are the Imperial siblings, Kato and Nefaru. The old makeup wolf is the only person that I've seen over the past two and a half weeks that I've been here. It makes me think that I still want to see the city before I leave. If I leave. I block that thought from my brain, trying not to think of what might happen if these trials go poorly for us. 
Instead, I try to let the bright sunshine and fresh, fresh morning air calm my nerves. Eventually, I make my way to the dining room, and when I look in, I see Alex. Sitting on... <sighs> Alex sitting on one of the beds. His ears perk up as he sees me, eyes widening in surprise. Fuck you, Alex. Oh, hello, Marco. How are you? He stares at my face, then down at my costume. I feel myself turning red, and I desperately wish I had stayed in Amicus's room. I'm able to swallow the embarrassment down for now, though. I know Alex pretty well, after all. Where's your costume? At this point, I feel like I'm the only person being made to play dress-up. I sit down on the middle bed, not wanting to be directly across from the cat, where he'd have to stare at me. Er, should I be in one? I shrug. I don't know, they put me in one, obviously. Obviously, and the powder, too. I glare at Alex. I mean, you look good, very bold. So why the hell aren't you dressed up as Mira? We're doing the same dance, right? Well, yes, though Cassius instructed that they be in my underwear. Actually, I think I prefer your situation. Sure. Seriously, you think I want all of a dancer to see my naked torso? Alex hugs himself, shuddering. It's so embarrassing. I sit, I sigh and sit back on the bed, only now noticing that Cassius is on the screen playing some sort of brass instrument that looks to be vaguely in the shape of a French horn. It sounds nothing like one, though. The volume is low, but I can hear the raspy, sputtering sound it's making. Not pleasant to my ear. But then the idea of what music and dance is seems to be very different from Earth. Well, I'd prefer being half-naked. If this is my introduction to the moon, why am I all covered up like this? I'm pretty sure they'd rather get a better look of what I actually look like. But as I'm saying that, I wonder if maybe that's why Amicus had me so covered up. The dress looks very good, actually. It's the makeup that surprises me. I suppose it's very... woven to do something like that. I look at Alex, frowning. Woven? Oh, is this offensive? Eh, maybe just a smidge, but not to the wolves. So you have nothing to worry about. The Hindos don't talk to Adastra anymore. Oh my god. I want to bury my face in my hands, but I can't with all the makeup on. On top of that, it's all starting to itch. This is so stupid. Alex chuckles. It really is. The wolves are obsessed with spectacle and drama, which is why these trials are used instead of elections, or even just sound judgment from a council. Alex gestures up at one of the screens. It's an Adastrian holiday right now, so everyone can watch this. Cassius has finished his little song, standing up and bowing. Along the right edge of the screen, five little boxes pop up, each one containing the faces of three wolves, sitting solemnly side by side. Well, in a way, the people are having a role in choosing the Emperor here, with their elected triumvirates making the decision, and I don't understand why song and dance should apply. So why would Cassius and Amicus campaign if they're just going to be chosen through these trials? Well, if the decision isn't clear, why not choose the wolf that has the most popularity with your people? And increase the chance of re-election. Amicus suddenly appears on screen, sitting down, a spotlight on him as he begins to blow into the same instrument. Again, that raspy, blattering sound that would make me cringe if it were a human instrument at a human concert. I have no idea if he's better than Cassius or not. In general, popularity is good to have anyway. A happy people is usually a more peaceful and easier to control society. So, Amicus is at a disadvantage, then. Unless he clearly outperforms Cassius. I sigh, watching as the, wolf, as the wolf's cheeks puff up each time he blows into his little horn, his eyes almost crossed with the effort. I guess you elect your officials? Yes. So does most of... I find myself almost saying the name of my planet again. It's harder and harder to keep the secret from Alex. Especially as our relationship has become more casual. Our tribes. At least I think that's what they are on the Simeon planet. I just have to hope that Alex doesn't actually look it up. But he continues on like he didn't notice my pause. Like he always does. Anyway, despite the competition, I still consider you a friend and I hope you feel the same. Maybe we can have lunch in the garden soon, no matter the result? Yeah, let's do that. Wonderful. We sit in silence for another ten minutes or so, watching as Amicus finishes his horn playing. Then Cassius takes the spotlight again to begin singing. It's actually just howling. Cass's head 
leaned back, muzzle tipped towards the ceiling, looking just like a wolf on earth as it howls to the moon. I think he's saying words, but I can't really understand, especially with the odd high-pitched tone it has. Meanwhile, a little gauge pops up on the bottom screen, a needle going back and forth with the pitch of the howl. They want the indicator to stay in the middle. It represents better control over their song. It's short, only a few minutes before it's Amicus's turn. Doing much the same as Cassius, except his howl is deeper. Fuller. A lot better, I think. I also like to think that the needle stays in the middle more often than it had for Cassius, but I'm not sure. Towards the end of Amicus's song, Tom's voice crackles gently over our heads. Alex, Marco, the dance begins in five minutes. Please proceed to the throne room doors. <sighs> My heart skips a beat and we both stand up, Alex leading the way to the hall. God fucking damn it, this is insane. And my nose is fucking falling apart as we do this. I wonder if he's nervous too. Even though he looks calm, his tail lashes back and forth as we walk. I would try to talk to him, feeling like we're both a little preoccupied with our own thoughts right now. We get to the big double doors and wait side by side. Alex's paws are folded neatly in front of himself, so I do the same. I try to breathe evenly. I've never been, in f been good in front of big crowds, and even though it's technically only a Kato out there, I can't forget the fact that millions of people are going to be watching. Dan's trial begins in five, four, three, two. The doors slide open. Oh, fuck my nose! Fuck my nose! The doors slide open, and I find myself staring into a darkened throne room, the windows deeply tinted so that only a vague hint of sunlight comes through. I immediately see Amicus straight ahead of me, bathed in a bright spotlight. The same can be said for Cassius, about ten meters to his right. Cato sits on the throne, just like in my dream. I also notice Virginia and Neferu sitting next to each other on one of the benches. That alone makes me even more nervous, but then a voice comes over the PA. Not calm, but someone else, sounding old and frail. Presenting Pet Alexios from Moon Amorpha and Pet Marco from Planet Shibia. I have no idea why I did that one. We're, just, we're not bothering with... It, the old and frail, I just I went with that, even though it's supposed to be like uh, an Italian wolf. Amicus and Cassius reach out one paw, and Alex starts to walk forward on his toes, looking light and sophisticated. I quickly follow suit, trying to sort of mimic his walk. I'd never practiced my interest with Amicus. I start to wonder if I'm even more underprepared than I thought I was. No time to think about that now. I do the best I can with my stupid prancing walk before coming to a stop in front of Amicus, reaching out a hand to rest in his big paw. He smiles reassuringly down at me, and for some reason his presence makes me a little less nervous than I had been while waiting alone for the trial to start. We stand there quietly for a moment, but then that old voice starts up again, but now it's a howl, high, wavering, and faint. Explorat Adverviro. He starts to recite the story in the same howl, but it's hard to hear. Now that there are words... Wait, I can't understand it. He's speaking... Oh, fuck. The linguist and translating the song. Immediately, I start to panic as I see Amicus raise up his paw. I probably have a look of horror on my face because his reassuring smile has turned to a frown. Jerkily, I raise my hand up to touch it to the wolf's paw, trying to stay calm. I can do this. Sure. I attached a lot of the movements to the words in the song, but I remember the order of the poses, I think. Still, the unexpected blunder has me flustered and stumbling, and my movement's hesitant, and definitely unelegant. I'm so frazzled I don't really have time to dwell on the fact that Alex and Cassius are doing the dance at the same time. Are we competing for Cato and the watching triumvirate's attention? I try to stay focused on Amicus, watching his movements, hoping that I might remember enough of his cues to get through all the movements correctly. My falling apart must be affecting Amicus as well. His brow furrowed in confusion, his movements also becoming slower, more hesitant. Fuck. I think I can feel sweat running down my face, probably turning my striped makeup into a streaked mess. Several times I'm caught staring at Amicus, unsure of what to do, then I look over at Alex to see what he's doing. The cat looks totally in his element, stretching and elongating his body luxuriously in tandem with Cassius. The wolf isn't bad himself, taking the clear lead in the dance as he dips and sways with Alex's body. Meanwhile, I fumble around with Amicus, watching as the patter on my big sweaty arms... S no. My arms aren't big. His arms are big. Shit. 
watching as the powder on my sweaty arms smears on his fur, leaving long black smudges on his chest and arms. Finally, we get over to Mira's death, and at least I know when this is supposed to happen because I see Amicus reach out dramatically for me. This is the only moment in the entire dance I feel confident in what I'm doing, and I put everything into my swoon. But so does Alex. Amicus is already next to me to catch me before I start to fall, but Alex swoons while Cassius is still meters away from him, but the other wolf smoothly glides to his side to catch him. Alex lays there in Cassius' arms, splayed out dramatically, looking somehow serene and distressed at the same time. The spotlight almost makes the pair glitter, and even I feel there's a good deal of chemistry between the two of them. There had been a small but definite hope on my end that Alex might help us out here, maybe throw the dance in our favor with a fall or a stumble, but it looks like he's putting everything into the performance. It's 12 here, I have to go to school, so I'm off to sleep. Yeah, sleep well, DBZ. Take care. Cassius, despite his reputation for being weak, looks strong and confident, easily supporting Alex's weight as the cat dips further toward the ground. At the same time, the wolf's howl reaches a new high pitch the climax of the story. That's when Alex turns his head to Cassius for a deep, passionate kiss. Even though Mira's supposed to be gone at this point, Alex reaches up to caress Cassius's face, pulling him in deeper. Meanwhile, their bodies press closely together, Cassius very clearly grinding his hips against the cat's the cat, the paw that's not supporting Alex instead running up his thigh, before dipping under Alex's underwear and pushing it up until most of the cat's thigh is showing. And they just writhe against each other like that, as if caught in the throes of passion, the movements of their muzzles telling me that a lot is going on past those lips. The entire act stuns me, almost making me forget about the disaster that our own dance has become. Cassius turns, carrying Alex with him as he faces them in the other direction, never breaking the kiss. In fact, their groping and grinding gets even more intense. He's giving everyone a good view of what's happening. The whole idea of the dance is to capture the attention and make the story and feelings believable. Well, I believe them. In fact, I believe there's a lot more going on between the two than I'd originally thought. It might explain why Alex wouldn't want to hurt Cassius' chance of becoming Emperor. Maybe my hopes that Alex would help us were completely naive. That's when I'm suddenly snapped back to reality as I hear Amicus grunt above me. I become so enamored with Cassius and Alex's kiss that I've forgotten our own. Seeing a preview of what I might have to do with Amicus, though, I blush, stealing myself, getting ready as the wolf starts to lean down towards me, his lips puckered up slightly. Already my own lips. Then suddenly Amicus turns his head to the side slightly, landing the kiss on my cheek instead. It's soft and fleeting, and before I know it, Amicus is pulled back before gently lowering me to the cold marble below. I recognize the word Adastra in the howl before everything goes quiet. I hear Alex getting up just a few feet away, so I do the same. Amicus quickly hurrying over to help me up in my dress. It's only then that I see the various drones floating above us, the attached lenses making me realize that they're cameras. I quickly duck my head, not wanting the people to see the smeared offensive makeup on my face. Amicus holds me close to his side, not saying anything, thankfully. Cassius continues to look straight ahead, and I can see Alex glancing at us, looking confused. Then Calm's voice. The Triumvirates have made their decision. Lupus, Cassius. Ad rote, Cassius. Lux, Cassius. Gebye, Cassius. Triceli, Cassius. Adastra? The camera drone swivels to focus on Cato. He shifts on his throne before grunting out his answer. Cassius. The trial has been decided. Cassius is the victor. There's a moment of stunned silence, then the windows untint and the camera drones lazily drift away up into some ceiling compartment. I'm left standing there looking around at the others. Kedo is walking down the steps from the throne in the direction of Cassius. Meanwhile, Virginia's whispering to Nefero behind a fan that she's casually waving into her face. Cassius is petting Alex's head, murmuring to him under his breath. Finally, Amicus stands awkwardly to my side, not even looking at me, his paws behind his back and his eyes on Cato. I suddenly realize how stupid I look. Can I go change? I mumble to Amicus, keeping my voice low like everyone else's. 
as if we're in a library or something. Um, sure. Do you want... I don't let him finish. I'm walking as fast as I can to the double doors, knowing that everyone's eyes are on my back as I pause to touch the black panel. Once I'm in the main hall, I'm able to breathe a little easier, starting to feel the anger coming up through the absolute humiliation. I don't know exactly what I'm angry at. Not Amicus, even though he maybe should have had an idea that howls don't translate. Not Cato or the Triumvirates. They made the right decision. I've been a complete disaster out there. I guess I'm just mad at this whole system that the responsibility of getting home rests on me just as much as the guy that got me here in the first place. It isn't fair. So I guess I am pissed at Amicus in a way. But the anger is a lot broader than that. I'm angry at the entire situation. I go straight to the bathroom, roughly trying to yank off the stupid dress. It's tied around my neck and I spent the next minute doing an awkward dance trying to find the buttons on the back so I can loosen it. Eventually I just rip it off before wiggling out of the dress, feeling a little guilty only after I see the beautiful fabric crumpled on the ground. I stand there, breathing heavily, sweaty and hot. I look in the mirror and I'm a little surprised to see the makeup still mostly intact on my face, which reminds me. I'm also pissed that the first time I get paraded out to the public, it's in a racist costume and makeup. I get in the shower, letting the hot water run over my face, feeling a little better now that I'm alone with my thoughts and out of the tight dress. Still, my mood is a bit dark. I guess now I can actually start to consider that I might be living here forever. While my mind initially rejects the idea, I guess it's not the worst fate. I'll at least be living in a palace with Amicus, and I know he'd take care of me. At least I think he would. Maybe this whole pet thing is temporary. If he loses the trial, he'll just throw me out with the trash. Maybe kill me like he'd once mentioned on the ship. After my gloomy contemplations, though, I know that's not the case. He wouldn't do that. I can't promise myself that I'd be able to keep friendly with him if things really do go south. He told me this would be easy so many times. Even if the lingua hadn't messed up, I doubt we still would have won. After a good half hour, I finally get out of the shower. I stand in front of the fans for a bit, enjoying the way it whips my hair around before I pick up some underwear off the hook and tie it on. I don't know if we're getting Amicus Cock, so we're gonna quickly turn on the Amicus Cock Denier. Yeah. I'm pretty fast at doing it now, not even having to think about it. Finally, I open the door. The cool air that rushes in is refreshing after such a hot shower, but I'm immediately treated to the sight of Amicus walking away from the door, probably in the middle of pacing. He immediately turns around at the sound of his eyes wide. Nope. No dick. No dick. Hey, Marco. How are you? Great. I walk over to the dresser, opening the one that's full of children's robes. Really? Sure. I hear Amicus half behind me. Please, I don't want to deal with that mood of yours right now. I just don't want to talk. That's fair. But him telling me to stop sulking is making me sulkier. You know, I would have loved to just talk like a week ago about this stupid trial. Imagine how much better it would have gone if I'd actually memorized the dance rather than just following cues from you and the song. I whip out a robe. Which, by the way, isn't a song. You always make fun of Earthlings in our primitive ways, but at least we actually have a variety of music. Oh, we can actually sing, not those creepy howling sounds that sound like you're dying. Amicus frowns at me, his ears flat. You're upset. No, what made you think that? Stop it, Marco. I'm just as upset and disappointed as you probably are. Was it the cameras? Maybe Kato that made you nervous? What happened? I'm quiet for a moment as I start tying on my robe, and suddenly Amicus's paw reaches out, grabbing my right hand and yanking it away from my clothing. What? What happened to your paw? I look up and see the wolf staring at the palm side of my hand with eyes wide before turning it this way and that. What? Your skin, it's... It's bunching up? Are you having a reaction to the powder? I stare at him, confused before pulling my hand away to look at my pruny fingers. No, I was just in the shower too long. My skin does that when I'm wet for a long time. I've never noticed that before. You take short showers. The wolf frowns at me, then snatches my hand up again to stare at the fingers in fascination, even as I try to yank it back. At that point, I feel my mood about to take a turn in one of two directions, either exploding at Amicus in frustration and anger over everything, or just laughing. I find myself doing the latter, chuckling at first before letting, let, before letting out a long, 
a loud guffaw. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Amicus. Amicus, you're a fucking loser. Huh? No. Amicus gives me a strange look, finally letting me go. Are you sure you're right? You're worrying me. I sigh as I finish tying on my rope before flopping back onto the bed. Hands above my head as I let the pleasant, cool air drift down from the ceiling to blanket my body. <sighs> I know I'm going to get cold in a few minutes, but for now it feels good. Remember how you said the lingua has trouble translating some things? Yes, I... I hear the wolf pause as he figures out what went wrong. Heard nothing but wailing Latin in that howling noise. I had no idea what I was doing. Oh, gods. There's a heavy thump and I feel the mattress crater and tilt sideways a bit as Amicus sits down next to me. So, yeah. Marco, I'm so sorry. I didn't even contemplate the possibility. It's fine. I don't think either of us could have. I mean, I've listened to music from the kids before. I've never had an issue with lyrics translating. I shrug. I don't know. Doesn't the lingua try to understand intention too? Maybe I'm meant to hear the true language when you guys sing. Uh, it was happening while you were doing your song, even though I didn't realize it then. Oh, you heard me sing. I can hear the embarrassment in Amicus's voice. Yeah, it sounded fine, honestly. I was just being a dick earlier. I know. But still, I'm tired of you trashing on human culture. I know. And I knew that makeup was offensive, by the way. I looked like an idiot for all of Adastra to see. You looked good. I turned my head towards the wolf. Oh really? Fumbling around like an idiot with no clue of what he's doing looks good? Amicus stays quiet this time. I stare back up at the ceiling. I guess at least I'm keeping up the dumb primitive ape act, right? Amicus just sighs, getting up. I watch as he slowly walks over to the sofa to sit down. I have to say that although you are a very kind, intelligent person, you are very frustrating when you get into these moods. Frustrating? Just so gloomy and self-defeating. You remind me of Cassius sometimes. I pull a face. Since when is he self-defeating? He seems pretty full of himself to me. You don't know the real Cass. He very much dislikes himself. Also, don't compare me to your brother. I really don't want to be thinking about him right now. I'm just... I'm just saying. I prefer you in lighter spirits. It suits you more. I'll work on it. A long silence goes by, and with the way Amicus is shifting around, I can tell he wants to ask me something. What is it? Well, uh... I guess that a little celebration is out of the question now? The dinner? Um, I sit up and suddenly, I sit up suddenly giving him an incredulous look. Seriously? Whoa, I was just kid. We just lost the trial. You're one trial away from losing the Emperorship and you're seriously thinking about that. I was just having a bit of fun. No, you want a pity handy. It's not like I need you to do it. I can get the job done myself. <laughs> then do it. I will. Amica sits there huffily, not making eye contact. I sigh, remembering what the wolf said about improving my mood. I often criticize Amicus for his tantrums, reminding him that it won't help to sulk. Help us to sulk. It's kind of hypocritical that I don't hold myself to the same standards. <sighs> Sorry, I've just got a lot on my mind, obviously. Listen, I know this went very differently than what we had planned, but I would certainly win the next trial. I've debated Cassius many times before. Do I have to do anything? Other than watch? No. When is it? Two weeks from now. You'd better win. I will. I sigh again, realizing that the knot I've had on my stomach the past few weeks is a bit longer to stick around. And I might still make a jacking motion in the air later on. I'm just not in the right state of mind right now. <laughs> ah, I understand it was too early to make light of things, though, uh... Maybe we could do something else that would make us both feel better? Something else? Yes, like I could just... hold you? Amicus' voice gets uncharacteristically high on the last word. Hold me. 
I repeat his words. Why would you want to do that? Well, companionship is part of a pet duties, and holding or embracing is often how it is expressed. It might also be comforting to you, considering how stressful the past few hours have been. Again, there's that hopeful look. And again, I actually feel bad for him. How lonely do you have to be to just want to cuddle someone? Same time, I want to. I may not want to admit it, but I've also been lonely these past three weeks, emotionally and physically. Also, I've really liked our short hugs, so a longer one? Try not to look too eager myself, I sigh and stand up. Amicus's ears immediately perk up in happy surprise. He leans back, legs together, waiting as I walk up to him. Do you? I sit down in his lap, a little awkwardly at first as I wobble around, then finally settling on turning sideways. Knees drawn up as I lean my shoulder against his chest. Amicus pauses, then wraps his arms around me. Despite the awkward start, I'm amazed at the way I sort of just fit against the curve of his body. His big furry arms envelop me, and I feel the muscles tighten briefly before relaxing. His soft stomach cushions against my side, making it feel as if I'm leaning against a big, furry, but firm waterbed. His chest is broad and thick propping my head up comfortably as he scoots his butt out a bit to help us better recline. Then he tucks my head under his chin, and just like that, I'm surrounded by his warmth, a cold that had started to bite at my bare skin, dissipating immediately. I feel a little thrill in my chest at the feeling of having this wolf, so large and powerful, hug and cuddle me so gently. That's the dream. Big monster boyfriend could kill you, treats you gently. That's, that's the dream. That's the dream. That's what we want. Something about that is so nice. Amicus just holds me in silence for a while and I feel his paws shift around a bit, like he's kneading through the robe to the skin on my back. Finally, his deep voice rumbles through his chest and against my ear. Is this alright? Yeah, this is... fine. I blush out, embarrassed at how much I'm enjoying this. Originally, I just wanted to make him feel better, but he was right about this making me feel better. Amicus rubs his chin down against the top of my head, and I hear him inhale. I suppose this isn't a normal thing to do on Earth. Well, it is if you're dating someone. It's not a usual thing with friends, though. Ah. Amicus paused at me a bit more making those tiny movements as if he's trying to feel me as much as possible without being obvious about it. What is dating on your planet? I shrug, though it's hard to do against this wolf's tight embrace. Just asking someone you like out on a date. Basically, it just means that you like the person and you want to know more about them, and dating helps you do that. Ah, sounds fairly casual. So how does one initiate dating? I don't know, just ask them. Give them flowers for old fashioned, but it's pretty casual, honestly. Hmm. Why are you so curious? It's Amicus's turn to shrug. I always want to be careful about your boundaries. It's easier when I understand your culture better. I lean against the wolf, realizing that even though I've made a complete fool out of myself, just half an hour earlier, I feel fine. I kind of hope this isn't the last time we do something like this. Knowing Amicus, it likely won't be. It's a few days later when I'm finally able to hang out with Alex like we'd planned. Cassius has stepped up his campaign over the past several days as his chances of becoming Emperor increased. So did Amicus after his decreased. The difference being that Alex often found himself going on campaign trips with the White Wolf, while Amicus always left me behind. I think Amicus has picked up on the fact that I don't like being out in front of so many people after the whole dance incident. <laughs> Still, he promises me that when he wins the next trial, we'll go out to the city to celebrate. For now, though, I'm happy to stay in the gardens with Alex, enjoying a quiet midday meal as we both talk and sip our tea. Honestly, he should have us redo the dance if your lingua wasn't translating. Was yours? Well, no, but I knew it wouldn't. Wolves never intend for their lyrics to translate over the lingua, but it ruins the owl, which they see to be the whole point of singing. Hmm. I could understand Amicus overlooking that, though. Most wolves never see another sibling species in person their entire lives. Well, it's over now. On to the debate thing they're going to do next. Oh yes, 
Cassie has been training with the best rhetorician on the moon, Marcus Manius. I notice that he puts a bit of emphasis on the name and I look over at him. Alex sips his tea daintily, watching the fountain lazily. He's offered Cassius many tips on convincing the triumvirate. Very useful tips, actually. Is Amicus doing something similar? I realize that Alex is offering me information on what Cassius is doing to prepare for the trial. At least I think he is. Whether that's the case or not, I try to remember the name of the rhetoric guy, knowing I should tell Amicus later. I'm not really sure. He hasn't told me all that much about what he's doing, but hopefully it's something similar. Well, I would recommend he study the triumvirates in their cities, if only to find the best way to convince them during the second trial. Yep, definitely offering me information. Thing is, after seeing the way he and Cassius interacted, I wonder if I could fully trust him. Oh. Oh, Marco. Oh, poor baby Marco. Oh, poor baby Marco. Poor baby, 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 Marco. God damn it, Marco. No, we can't trust Alex. Archangel spoiler incident four. What do you mean, Archangel incident four? What do you mean, incident four? What do you mean, incident four? If by that you mean it's not really a spoiler. Also, I'm not the one who did the big spoil. That was someone else. I didn't do that. The big spoil was someone else. Don't you dare fucking pin that on me. You know, Cassius was saying something earlier while I was serving him about a week ago. Did you know he had plans to get rid of the triumvirates? Alex's eyes widened for a moment. Oh, really? Hmm. I wonder why. Something about it being easier to rule directly rather than through elected officials? Well, it's a radical thinking, isn't it? My throat is starting to hurt. I might need to, like... I might actually need to take a, a somewhat extended break. Oh, wait, sorry, I need to go back. I didn't fucking read that one. That's what Virginia said. Well, she's always been rather reasonable. Honestly. Alex leans in, lowering his voice. I'd rather she become the Empress, but unfortunately, the wolves don't allow females to hold positions of much authority, so her chances at the throne are nil. Alex's eyes suddenly widen as he looks over my shoulder. I raise my eyebrows, then look back to see Nefaru making his way over towards us. Yes. I turn around to see Alex looking down towards the ground, his tail lashing around before he holds it in his lap. The jackal stops to stand in front of us. Without a word, he delicately takes one of Alex's paw, paws and bows low to kiss it. Alex raises his other paw to his mouth, blushing furiously. Meanwhile, Nefaru just nods at me. Good day, Alex and Marco. How is your midday meal? Alex still has his paw to his mouth, so I answer for him. It's okay. How are you? Splendid! I notice that he's carrying a bottle in his paw, the glass glinting in the sunlight with his every move. I was just taking a walk through the gardens this morning, but... Th no, I, that's not quite the Nefaro accent I'm going for. I was just taking a walk through the gardens this morning, when I happened across a shockingly large spider that skidded across the ground at my paws. Nefaro sweeps his paw in front of himself as if showing where the spider ran. I can't help but wonder if I'm in danger here. Alex fu- no. Yeah, whatever. Nefer- I, I can't decide on Nefaru's voice even to this day. Alex finally speaks up then, squeaking with the first syllable. No, they're rather harmless. Their venom is very mild. Ah, well, that's a relief to hear, Alex. On my home planet, I'd often have to shake my loincloths out before wearing them, in case of scorpions. Oh, really? That's terrifying. It's certain, it certainly can be, but it's something you get used to. So it's sort of British gentleman, but not quite. It's like, it's like you're from a foreign country, but you learned how to speak like a gentleman sort of thing. 
Alex and Nefaru smile at each other for a moment. I frown at the cat, wondering what the hell he's doing. Oh, yes. I came to give you this. Nefaru leans down and holds up the glass bottle, and now I see it's filled with a honey-colored liquid that sloshes lazily in the bottle. The Bunis seed oil I promised. Much better for the fur than the adasterin oils they have for us. Alex reaches out and takes the bottle, blushing again. Thank you, Nefaru. I'll use the first thing tomorrow. And I'll see you again tomorrow to make sure you do. The jackal winks, and I think I hear Alex make a strangled noise in his throat. In the meantime, would you like to take a walk with me? Uh, oh, I... Nefaru once again extends a paw. Alex coughs awkwardly before reaching out to take it. Wonderful. You're always such great company. Would you like to join us as well, Marco? I think back on what had happened in the baths. <laughs> no thanks. In that case, I'll see you around the palace. Why won't this game let me fuck Neferu? I wanna fuck Neferu. Please let me fuck Neferu. No. Yeah, see ya, Marco. Neferu offers his arm to the cat, and just like that, they're off to the gardens, disappearing around the many bushes lining the footpaths. Everyone has an accent, Alex. Everyone does. I stare after them, a bit confused, still unclear on what exactly the jackal is doing. I'm also reminded, I need to ask Alex about why the hell he told Neferu about my intelligence. Only problem is, I don't know how to do that without seeming suspicious. Technically, there isn't a reason why it's supposed to be a secret, and I feel like bringing it up will only give the cat reason to dig in more deeply. As I'm wondering all of this, I notice a shape in the bushes near the ones that Alex and the fairy disappeared behind. Then I see a flash of red and maybe an elbow poking out. What the? Amicus? I yelled out in his direction, and I see the wolf jump suddenly coming out from behind his cover. Yes? was just having a look at the roses. The wolf walks towards me, his paws behind his back. I raise an eyebrow at him. Were you spying on us? Were you trying to avoid Nefaro or something? Amicus ignores me this time. How was your day, Marco? Um, okay... I try to look around the wolf's side of whatever he's hiding behind his back, but he turns accordingly to keep it obscured. What are you doing? Well... Amicus takes a deep breath, and I feel myself starting to get nervous. Then he goes down on one knee. <laughs> Marco, over the past few weeks, I've come to enjoy your company immensely. <laughs> My mouth drops. And over the past few weeks, I've come to realize we share so much in common in terms of our goals and desires. Amicus gives me a coy smile at that. What are you? So I decided I should take the next step to make you feel more welcome and to show you how much I appreciate your kindness and understanding. The wolf suddenly swings his paws to his front, revealing what he had been hiding. It's a bouquet of purple flowers, lavenders to be exact, along with several smaller white flowers sprinkled into the mix. Marco, will you date me? <laughs> yes, you big dummy. <laughs> God damn it. Yo, shit, he gay! <laughs> You're right. I stare at the wolf, still taking in the presentation he'd just given me. My mouth still hangs open, I make a few uh sounds as I try to form a coherent sentence to respond to my mind. Ah, I probably messed that up, huh? Well, hopefully the message came across clearly. What do you think? I'm stunned. And that's... good? Amicus, what is this? Oh, I did something wrong, didn't I? Well, I mean, did you mean to do it? The whole thing is crazy, but Amicus's demeanor doesn't really match with the proposal he just made. Did... Did I mean to ask you out on a date? Well, yeah, did you? Yes. Now the wolf is really fidgeting, tugging at his cape nervously as he lowers the bouquet to hang limply at his side. Oh, Yek... Oh, wait, is Yek here? What do you mean? Hello, Yek. What do you mean, hello, Yek? Where's Yek? Where's Yek? Is Yek here? Where the fuck is he? Where the fuck is he? Where the fuck is that son of a bitch? Kek. Or were you just saying that after I said, Huh! Gay! 
I have an odd butterflies in the stomach feeling that won't seem to go away. I don't know what it means, but I try to ignore it. The wolf suddenly deflates, looking dejected. Did I pick up the incorrect meaning? I clear my throat, trying to gather my wits. What, uh, do you think dating is? Well? What you told me? It's a relationship, a status that enables you to become a closer, learning more about each other, along with normalizing physical intimacy. Well, he seems to have it down for the most part. The part that I'm having trouble with, though, well, people that date also tend to have, I guess, feelings for each other? Well, yes, I have very friendly feelings towards you, and I want to make you comfortable around me. Especially when it comes to physical intimacy. Isn't that the point of a dating? I sigh, realizing I hadn't explained it well enough, but then I realized, hadn't realized that Amicus was planning to do this either. God damn it, Alexa. Well, usually people don't do it unless they love each other. My voice gets quieter and quieter over the course of the sentence until Amicus has to poke his ears forward to hear me. No? Yeah. Oh. Amicus stands there a moment before the insides of his ears turn bright red. You said it was a casual! The wolf raises his voice and suddenly increase the sudden increase in volume, making me jump. Well, it is. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be in love to date, but the intention is usually to find love. Dear gods, was your intention just to humiliate me after the dance? What the hell are you talking about? How was I supposed to know you were planning this? I think me asking those questions had made it fairly obvious. You assume way too much. Clearly. The wolf tosses the bouquet to the side, letting it land on the bench before it rolls off to the ground. Amicus slumps down on the bench next to me, his ears still red. I let him grumble to himself for a minute or two, wanting to let him cool off from the initial embarrassment. Then I reach up to rest a hand on his broad shoulder. I didn't mean to embarrass you. Besides, how are you supposed to know? It's an earth thing. Amicus waves a paw. It's fine. Like you said, I assume too much. I lean over to pick up the bouquet, seeing how the flowers just kind of look bunched together. You make this yourself? Well, yes. The garden has many flowers. It smells like you. Er, uh, yes. It looks good. Thank you. We sit quietly for a few more minutes as I pretend to examine all the flowers in the bouquet. So... It's either friendship or love with the humans. No physical intimacy unless you're bound to fall in love. What do you mean? Like this dating culture you have. You were interested in giving me that uh, sexual favor. Does that mean you are also interested in love with me as well? I blush. Well, not exactly. Didn't you say dating allows for more intimacy? But dating is also meant to look for love? I sigh and set the bouquet aside. Things are changing, becoming more casual. I say the words carefully and Amicus snorts. But I guess the term you might be looking for is friends with benefits. Benefits? Friends that have sex, basically. Ah, I see. We haven't done that, though. No, but I'm not going to make you date me just to get a hand job. Heh. <laughs> Amicus scratches behind his head before looking away again. Once again, I find myself feeling bad for him. Listen, if we weren't having this whole, I lower my voice, illegal space adventure, I might say yes. What? Really? I said might. Oh, really? I think you're missing a key word there. I think I understand. I find myself turning red again, wishing I just kept my mouth shut. Well, maybe I might as well. Well, you already asked. Without knowing the full meaning. I try to think of something else to change the subject, knowing that my blush is clear as day to the wolf. He's very much enjoying it. And anyway, Alexios told me that Cassius was training under a person, um Marcus Manliest. <laughs> Marcus Manliest is my favorite Roman rhetorician. God damn it. Uh Amicus suddenly frowns. Marcus Manius? Really? I think that's what he said. Damn. <sighs> Amicus's tone is that of awe. Is that bad? It's simply surprising. 
He's the most famous Adastan rhetorician there is. Would I be worried? No. In fact, now that you've told me, I'm in much better shape. I now have an idea what style he might use. That will make it easier to counter his points. If you're sure. Of course. I'll come to my room to help me practice, just to make extra certain I'll win. We get up and walk back to the palace, through the gardens, leaving the bouquet of flowers behind on the bench. Amica seems to have gotten over his embarrassment about the whole incident pretty quickly. It's just like him to be able to do that, actually. In fact, we're laughing and making... We're, we're laughing and talking just as easily as we always have. The wolf nudging me every few minutes to punctuate something he says, each one causing me to stumble. Anyway, Cass tends to stutter over his words in front of a large crowd. Not much a rhetorician can do about that. The wolf reaches out a paw, pressing to the black square. Besides, what exactly is he... Ooh! He's in the room! He's in the room! You naughty little bastard! You not. This is the second time he's done this. Oh my god, Cassius! You dirty little slut! Amicus and I stare in surprise as Cassius stares back at us with that look. With what looks like even more surprise. That his eyes narrow. Excuse me. He tries to move around us, but Amicus blocks his way, growling. What the hell are you doing in here, Amicus? Sorry, not Amicus, Cassius. What the hell are you doing in here, Cassius? Amicus seems to reserve his actual yelling only for Cassius, so it makes me jump when I hear it. Cassius collects himself quickly despite Amicus's intimidating snarls. Not much of your business, is it? If, if you're in my room, then it is my business. What are you doing? The wolf starts to advance on Cassius, stopping just feet away. Move, Amicus. Otherwise, I'm a calling Kato. Amicus eyes Cassius closely, then finally pulls back, folding his arms. Snooping around to find something that might give you a chance in the trial? I can tell you now, you'll be coming up short. Obviously. You've nothing to offer to help me win. Then why come here? Cassius ignores the other wolf walking past Amicus before passing by me. He turns then. And... You know, I shouldn't be worried after the pitiable display you and your pet put on. He turns to me and I can't help but frown at him. As stupid as he is ugly. I know that Cassius is just trying to get under Amicus's skin. He knows that he cares about me. But as Cassius reaches out to brush my chin with a paw, I can't stop myself from batting it away. Welcome back, Zara. Cassius' eyes widen and I see his paw draw back. I flinch, but immediately Amicus is there, ready, reaching out to grab Cassius by his cape. The small- oh! It's the battle music! This is- this is the battle music. The smaller wolf is pulled back from me, but Amicus doesn't stop there. As Cassius stumbles past Amicus, the bigger wolf swings his paw, smacking Cassius square in the nose. Cassius immediately goes down on his ass, at which point I hear another sound. Amicus and I stare down at the smaller wolf as he sits there. Stunned, then he suddenly scrambles up to his feet upon his rear. Amicus, you bastard! Tell raising a lover of ass! <laughs> I look back as Cassius practically splays, sprays blood from his nose. Amicus pulls me aside, eyes narrow, but I can feel his heart hammering against my shoulder. I'll throw you both in the dungeon for that! I'll have him executed when I am emperor! I see tears start to spill out of Cassius's eyes before he turns and stumbles out of the room, his tail hanging limply to the side. Amicus and I stand there for a long time after he leaves, the silence almost oppressive after the loud fight. A few minutes later, Amicus is flat on his stomach, looking under his bed as he mumbles something under his breath. I stand awkwardly off to the side, watching as he sweeps a paw underneath as if feeling for something. That's not a British. That was not a British accent. If that if that came across as a British accent, I'm fucking up. What are you doing? Amicus grunts as he gets to his knees, then stands up, looking up at the ceiling as he turns in a slow circle, looking for whatever Cass might have been doing. 
you know what he was doing? I have my suspicions. Which are... Amica stops his turning and looks at me, folding his arms. Well, I'm not sure, but a recording device, possibly. Or he was just snooping for information. Can we just ask Khan? No, his capabilities are very limited, despite what his intelligence might suggest. He doesn't record our activities, so we can't spy on each other. Rules put in place millennia ago. I'm a sleepy boy. I sigh and look at the door, still feeling a little shaken up after what had just happened. Why can't you lock the door or something? Amicus shrugs. That's something only the Emperor can do. Again, rules that have been in place for a very long time. That doesn't seem safe. Well, only the most trusted are allowed in the palace, after all. Which tends to only be family. Aside from Nefaru. Aside from him, yes. You don't have much freedom for being the Emperor's son. You just noticed. Amicus huffs and stands in the middle of the room, his arms folded, a deep frown on his face. He was probably just trying to find out what you're planning for the next trial. We know some stuff about him already. Hmm. Amicus continues to look concerned. What is it? I just... Amicus lowers his voice. Worry, it might have been something to do with you. After what he said as he was leaving, it left me it's left me uneasy, is all. Oh yeah, that thing about executing me. I haven't had time to think about the possibility of someone on the verge of near absolute power wanting me dead yet. Do you think he was serious? Amicus is quiet for a moment. No, but obviously I'm not going to assume he wasn't. I won't even give him a chance at the Emperorship now. I frown. And you were going to before? No, I'm just going to make extra sure now. I'm quiet, deciding to sit on the bed instead. I don't like that the situation has become a lot more serious than it already was. God, my face is really red. My face is really red, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm probably gonna... I'm probably gonna take a break at the next scene break and, like, go shower. Or, like, take a cold shower, make some dinner, and then I'll be back. After a moment, Amicus comes to sit next to me. The depression he creates in the mattress forcing me to lean sideways into him. He wraps an arm around me. Don't worry about it at all. He has no chance. Besides, I wouldn't let him touch you. How would you be able to do that if he's the Emperor, though? Well, I'm also his older brother. Some relationships are not to change. Even if the official ones do. I stay quiet, unconvinced. Anyway... It would look awful bad on his record. He just let his anger get the best of him. <sighs> He'll quickly forget about the matter with the next trial coming up. Amicus squeezes me. And this is all assuming he'd win. He won't. That's what you said last time. And we had an unforeseeable mishap last time. There isn't much possibility for one of those happening in this trial. We sit there a while longer, Amicus rubbing my shoulder with his paw. Despite my rising anxiety, it's comforting. Before long, I'm leaning my head against his shoulder. A week later, Amicus and I sit in the gardens, enjoying the fresh, cool morning air. So, what's your main argument? That the Dastra has been... Uh, should I fucking... Is that a good stopping point back there, guys? Are you okay if I, like, take a... If you, are, you, are you guys okay if I take a break right now? It looks like most of you have left. But, uh, you know. Uh, would people be opposed to me taking a break currently? Because I'm leaning towards doing that. Okay, you, you guys... You guys are still here. Good. Uh, the two of yous good yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna take a cold shower and make some dinner because it's uh it's getting late and i need food and as you can see by the camera my face is red hot
Okay. Um. Okay, so it's gonna be here. It's only 145. You're okay. guys get the Adastra theme music while I do dinner. I'm going to try to make this as quick as I can, I promise. Uh, I'm just I'm just going to cook up some pasta and get some fruit. It'll, it'll be really quick, I swear. Uh, heart slides, discord slides, where's the... There we go. Be right back. Okay, friends. Renditos. <coughs> Fuck. Ugh. I'll be back hopefully in half an hour or less. I'm trying to make this quick. Holy fuck.
okay, the stuff's going well. I just need to uh, bring some shit downstairs to swap. I got a lot of extra shit up in my room right now. I want to be a good boy. I am a good Moshe. Moshe, I'm horny. Moshe. Moshe, Moshe is horny. He's horny for the time. Time. I don't. I don't believe he's horny.
Sashi's back. Hello, hello. Must I stop? This is a pretty common name for the Romans. Is it not showing? I don't like that. <sighs> I don't like this. It's not showing. <laughs> There we go. We're back. We're back, baby. Well, of course, it takes place in Rome. This is it's it's it's, it's old references to old Rome. Okay, let's get myself set up here, and we'll pick up here. It's me and our bum the Amicus. Ah, 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 amicus. Uh, 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 amicus. We're gonna give Amicus an Ami kiss, and then suck his Ami cock. Fuck. Okay, friends, here we are. Actually, I should, uh. Oh. I'm eating a ravioli. It's a very Italian. Uh, oh shit, Vosh is live. <laughs> Vosh is live! Big, big Voshes, big Voshes, big Voshes. <laughs> okay. Let us. There we go. Okay. The phone's gonna be over there for now. Uh, let's. Return. A week later, Amicus and I sit in the gardens, enjoying the fresh, cool morning air. So, what's your main argument? That the Dastra has been on a steady rise, politically and economically, since the beginning of the Ad Astra policy era. Why take steps backwards when we're so clearly moving in the right direction? And Cassius? That the Dastra's decline over the past few hundred years is due to that policy, instead of looking outwards to the children, or the other siblings, we should instead be looking inwards at ourselves. Amicus scratches his nose. Well, that's the basics anyway. Obviously, there is a much, much more to it. So, how are you gonna counter that argument? Seems like a pretty good one to me. <clears throat> if the wheel of your chariot is cut on a stone, does that mean the campaign should be turned around and ended? He looks at me and I just stare back. Well, the answer is no. You simply need to give it a push. In other words, 
In other words, the downturn over the past 200 years is simply a stone in the road. Why throw away 10 millennia of progress due to a few centuries of a light hardship? Besides, it was completely predictable. The war with the Chemians and the resulting end of the diplomatic relations with most of the other siblings caused it. We certainly can't have any leverage in the galaxy when the only siblings speaking to us are the Gats. If we can fix those relations, we would be well on our way to prosperity again. Well, that and unstunting your children. Yes, that too. Which I still can't believe you did. Again, it wasn't me. Anyway, that will also be part of my argument. I'll praise the children fully as the partial uplift programs are now clearly a failure. And in the slavery. And consider the debts repaid, yes. Debts, debts that didn't exist in the first place, sure. Listen, Marco. I have to use very careful language so as not to upset the people. Not to mention the triumvirates. Feelings are sensitive at times like this, and must be considered despite of how tedious or untrue it can be. Amicus is right. The wolves are sensitive when it comes to their culture and history. I'm starting to realize their hubris is probably their biggest downfall. I lean back on the bench, starting to feel a little sweaty under the rising sun. Isn't that going to be Cassius's whole thing? Appeal to their feelings, throw out the etiquette, and get straight to the point? Possibly. Possibly, but I'm confident my composure and consideration will win over the triumvirates. You ever considered not being so confident, maybe preparing for the worst? I'm confident that I am prepared for the worst. I roll my eyes and Amicus glares at me. And Moshe eats mm, some ravioli. I don't understand why you're so insistent on projecting yourself onto me. Just because you are sure of yourself doesn't mean that I should be the same. I frown. Ouch. Sorry, but I, I strongly believe in what I'm doing. How can I ever be an emperor if I'm not sure that what I'm doing is right? Sure, but all I'm saying is that you might not always be right, and you need to be prepared for that. <laughs> Trust me. No, sorry, Amicus. Trust me. I'm learning as I go, but after the last trial, I'm preparing for everything. How are they even going to choose the winner? Won't they just pick who they agree with the most? Technically, no. They're supposed to choose the best performance, the most convincing and dramatic. How very woven. Mm -hmm. So you have to convince a majority of the triumvirates. Well, yes, but Geto's vote holds twice the power of a triumvirate vote. So I need at least four triumvirates, or two triumvirates, plus Keto. And what are Kato's beliefs? Amicus shrugs. He doesn't talk about them much, but again, it shouldn't matter. He's certainly right about Kato not talking much about himself. Mm -mm -mm. That tends to be the way everyone is around here. I can tell Amicus isn't all that interested in talking about this, though, so I try to think of something else. What started the war with the Chemians, by the way? <sighs> Their ambitions got to the best of them. They began to interact with some of our abandoned children, some of which were very close to Adastra. Uh, is that illegal or something? Well, technically not that they're abandoned, but it's never really happened considering if a species is abandoned. That's a signal to the other siblings that the race is unupliftable. So they weren't breaking any rules. Even if they weren't breaking laws, they were clearly provoking us by uplifting races just a few hundred light years away from our moon. They are an arrogant people. The fair seems nice, always polite. Emika smirks. Well, that's how they often get their way. A facade of a nice city to pull you into their trap. Either way, the war was a draw despite their technical advantage. Wolven tenacity beats Kimi and Tech any day. Despite Amicus's more progressive views on things, he's not immune to Wolven hubris either, it seems. But I'm not in the mood to argue with him about that. You know, Nefer reminds me of a culture on Earth. The Egyptians. I wonder if they uplifted there too. Amicus looks down at me, then snorts. More likely they just share a simple aesthetics. Your people be being uplifted twice while having no knowledge of the Galaxias is impossible. 
The Kimians are really abandoned anyway. Actually, I don't think they ever have. They tend to have the best of luck. <laughs> Amicus stretches. Honestly though, this talk is a boring. This is my only day off before the trial next week. We should do something fun. Like what? Amicus looks around, then grins. Want to practice Pugnu with me? No. Oh, come on. I know Amicus would go easy on me, but I don't really feel like getting sweaty and exhausted right now. Why don't we just go to the island and have a picnic again? Oh yeah, great idea. Amicus grins and hops up, making his way to the beach as he calls out to Calm to get the food ready. With a sigh, I get up and jog after him towards the sightseer. I stand on the beach, hands on my hips, as I look out at the sparkling lake. The breeze that's coming off of the water, cool and soothing. Just... Sorry, it's gotta be turned down a little bit. I'm not gonna eat more ravioli. Hmm. Adastra City sparkles in the distance as well, making the tall structures look like they have glass or crystal coating. I look back at Amicus, the wolf in the process of spreading out a blanket under the shade of the trees. Are you sure Kato isn't going to kick your ass for doing this again? I see the wolf's ears flick down for a moment. That was for missing an appointment. I don't have any today. I resist telling Amicus that it was about much more than a missed appointment. A missed lesson. And instead I walk over to help him spread the blanket out more evenly. Thank you. Now, shall we eat? <laughs> Amicus pulls the cloth off the blanket, revealing tightly packed and covered plates along with bottles of wine of bottles of wine and vietti. This time the food is a selection of wraps full of meat and cheeses along with chilled salted cucumbers. Amicus splays out that in that luxurious Roman way as he pulls his plate of food up next to his chest, immediately stuffing a whole wrap in his muzzle. I'm a bit more dainty. Instead, sitting next to the wolf cross-legged as I nibble on my own wrap. We eat in silence for a little while, Amicus gobbling up the majority of the food like always. I notice the wolf drinking more wine than he usually does, probably because it's his day off. After taking a particularly large swig, he points at my legs. I don't know how you're comfortable like that. Looks like a hen on the knees. Well, laying down like you or actually hurts my neck. I don't know how you do it for so long. I rub the left side of my neck as I say that, and carefully uncork the bottle of Virdi. Kato's the same way, but he's old. I take a sip of the cold drink that I've come to really like over the past few weeks. Speaking of Kato, who exactly is he? How did he become the acting emperor? I try circling us back to the conversation we'd had earlier, wanting to know more about the wolf that's apparently ruling all of Adastra right now. Oh, well... He was a father's friend since a childhood. He was the Imperial Legate during the Kimian War. Is that an important position? It's the highest rank in the military, aside from the Emperor, of course. He's credited with preventing outright defeat. Ugh, must be kind of weird for him to have the Pharaoh walking around in the palace. Another reason why I wonder what... No, another reason I wonder... Yeah, stuttering. Another reason I wonder why Virginia brought him to the palace. Kato's scars aren't just the physical. Physical? I take it you've noticed the visor, yes? Well, he lost an eye and part of his skull during the war. Eventually the other eye failed as well, and he'd have to go and he had to go to a parent to have mechanical vision installed. Anyway, Nefer was born decades after the war, so I doubt Kato holds anything against him specifically. Is he alright with the Alliance thing? Knowing this about Kato makes me worry that he might not agree with Amicus on one of his most controversial policies. I doubt that, but I think he understands it's necessary if we're to begin re-establishing our relations with the other siblings. <laughs> hmm. I feel my stomach turn a little as I realize we might be disadvantaged in this trial as well. Amicus. What's going to happen if you lose this next trial? Again, don't worry. I know you don't think it can happen, but if it does, what happens to me? Amicus frowns at me, a meat wrap halfway to his face before he sets it back down. <coughs> First of all, I won't have you worrying about Cassius's words, but he said was out of anger, and besides, I'll have measures in place to stop it from ever happening. What measures? 
I'm not fully sure of that yet, but I will have them in place by the time the next trial comes. Very good measures. Aside from that, what do I do next? Amicus thanks. Like I said before, I'll ensure a way home for you. The problem is the illegality of you being here. The more people who know about it, the more likely a monitor may be alerted to what happened. You need to be very careful about who I let know about the situation. Okay. I look down at my food, suddenly having lost my appetite. Amicus sighs, sounding annoyed. Come on, Marco. This is likely going to be your last few weeks here. Stop focusing so much on what's unlikely to happen. Let's enjoy ourselves a little bit. Bill suddenly sits up, brushing the crumbs off his fur before swigging down more wine. Come, let's practice combat! Oh, damn it. What? I said I didn't want to do that. Well, since you're so worried about Cassius, I'll teach you a few tricks to take him down. Take him down? Well, I don't trust him to keep his paws to himself now. So if he ever tries to take advantage of you while well, I am not around, you can at least hold him off long enough to get away. Yeah, that will make everything worse. Well, after what happened a few days ago, I suppose it can't get much worse. <coughs> I slowly get to my feet, straining out my robes. I'm not so sure about that. Besides, we just ate. Amicus laughs. It's not like your Kato. I think I'll be able to keep my food and drink down. What about me? I'm not going to hit you or anything. Amicus squares his stance, standing in the sand off to the side of the blanket, still in the shade. I sigh, recognizing that Amicus is in one of those moods where it's hard to talk about him doing something. Kato. I could probably beat him in a fair fight. He just caught me by surprise that last time. I paused and raised an eyebrow. What do you mean? I mean he started fighting no holds barred without warning. I'd have given him the business if I'd known he were going to do that. I don't think any le yeah, sorry. Hey, I don't think of you any less for losing a fight to an old man. Amicus furrows his brow the way he does when he's realizing I'm teasing him. I'm serious. So am I. I mean, you almost had me that one time with the spaceship. You were a real force to be reckoned with. It's not smart to tease a wolf before a fight, human. I'm not teasing. Mm-hmm. And kicking an unsuspecting man in the balls isn't exactly a win in my book. It is in mine. Clearly. Speaking of which, Abigail suddenly steps forward, thrusting his knee up at my crotch. I can only watch in horror as it comes up fast, stopping just an inch from my groin. We'll stand there for a for a gas and stumble back, holding my nuts even though Amicus didn't make contact. What the hell? If you don't want Cassius to hold broken bones against you, go for the genitals. That should be enough to stun him. This goes for anyone else who might try to attack you. <laughs> Annoyed, I make as if to do the same to Amicus, but he's already blocking. Ha ha, yes, like that. We'll try to be a little more subtle. Telegraph your moves are far too much. I stop struggling with the wolf, breathing heavily. <sighs> Fine. Then, as Amicus starts to drop his guard, I try to swat him in the crotch. He snatches at my hand immediately. Ah, better, Marco. Though you should probably try something harder than a flowery slap. I try to shove the wolf away, but he steps to the side. He gives me a shove as well. I trip over something, and it's not until... I'm on my ass that I realize he'd stuck his foot out behind me. <laughs> Amicus is just bullying us now, I swear to fuck. I look up at Amicus as he Wait, did I miss something there? No, I didn't. I look up at Amicus as he stands over me, the expression on his face showing me that he's trying very hard not to laugh. Angle up his feet, and you should be able to send him to the ground fairly easily. If he breaks any of his bones from the fall, then at least he can't say that you did it intentionally. Amicus reaches down with the paw to help me up. I take it and he pulls me up easily, almost lifting me off my feet. This is great and all, but I don't see how this is going to help me. I wasn't even the one that broke his tail, and he wanted me killed. <laughs> Again, with me standing in his way, he won't 
ever get the chance to try anything, even if he intends to. There is only one. This is only to give you a chance to get away from you. Amicus brushes the sand off my robes. Besides, this is useful in any situation, not just for Cassie. Oof! Amicus chokes on his last syllable as I ram my shoulder into him, grabbing at his legs and trying to trip him up, kind of like I saw Kato do to him in the amphitheater. Obviously, someone as small as me going up against a huge hulking wolf like Amicus is bound to fail, but the wolf does stumble back a few steps. Uh, hey! Amicus chuckles and I feel him let himself fall backwards into the sand. It reminds me of the last time we'd wrestled on the beach, except now I end up on top of him, with my fall cushioned by his body, my face bouncing against his massive chest. <sighs> Amicus grins at me. Ooh, not bad, not bad. With a little more force, you might be able to knock down someone as small as Cassius. I pin the wolf down, my hands on his shoulders. Oh please, I knocked you down fair and square! This time, I'm the one to yelp on my last syllable, Amicus easily reversing our positions as he rolls us both over. I find myself staring up at the wolf, his massive paws on my shoulders, his knees spread to either side of my thighs as he's careful not to rest his weight on top of me. He grins down at me, chest heaving for breath as his tongue dangles out his muzzle a bit, the way it sometimes does when he's buzzed, giving his grin a dopey quality. He's hunched over me to the point where his tongue almost touches my nose. Although I try to keep my face in a scowl, I can't stop the smile from coming through, and pretty soon I'm laughing a little. I'm about to tell Amicus that this whole thing is hardly fair when he leans down fully, pressing his lips to mine in a kiss. We did it, boys. We kissed the wolf. We kissed the wolf. Three cheers, we kissed the wolf. proud of us. I'm proud of us for kissing the wolf. <clears throat> I gasp in surprise, but it's through my nose as my mouth is sealed to his. My eyes are wide, his lips... No, his closed. My eyes are wide, his closed as he presses harder against my lips. As he bent over me, his paws left my shoulders to instead hold my head steady, one paw against my cheek, the other cupped around my head, his whole body huddling around my face. I don't move, not hugging back, but not turning away either. Instead I just lay there as I feel my heart skip a beat, the feeling of the big strong wolf crouched over me, kissing me, sending a thrill from my chest down to my crotch. The wolf's broad, cold nose twitches against mine before a hot huff of breath escapes it and washes over my face. At the same time, Amicus suddenly rolls off of me, our lips parting just as quickly as they'd connected, as he flops to the side of his back, mirroring... As he flops to the side on his back, mirroring my spread eagle position. I'm slipping up too much, I'm sorry, guys. I am getting tired. Oi. <laughs> We lay there next to each other, my heart hammering as I listen to the wolf wolf breathing. We lay there next to each other, my heart hammering as I listen to the wolf breathing heavily next to me. Aside from that, the only other sounds are the waves washing up against the shore a few dozen yards away. A few minutes pass in silence as I wait for the wolf to say something. He doesn't. And finally it gets to the point where I have to say something. So... Mm -hmm. Amicus responds instantly with an innocent, inquisitive grunt. What was that? That? Oh, the kiss. Yeah. I just thought I owed it to you after Mira. I watched it during the performance after all. The wolf sounds distant, distracted, like he's not paying attention to me. I finally prop myself up on an elbow, looking directly at Amicus now. <clears throat> Really? Like a child, Amicus looks away toward the lake, not saying anything. I wait a while longer, giving him a chance to respond, a chance he doesn't take. I sigh. Talk to me. What is there to say? I frown. A lot. I'm kind of confused, honestly. A big, huffing sigh, then... 
I like you, Marco. Quite a beat, in fact. <laughs> I know, I like you too. We technically confessed our feelings to each other when Amicus asked me on that date. But only technically. Are you drunk? Maybe a little. But I knew what I was doing. More silence. Amicus. Hmm? Could you look at me? Amicus's ears go flat and he slowly turns his head towards me. But his eyes are down looking at my chest rather than my face. I think about making uh, my eyes are up here joke. But I know it would fall flat with them. Listen, we already sort of talked about this. The problem is the situation we're in. It makes the whole <clears throat> dating thing impossible. I see Amicus smile at the word, then frown again. I know, but if we feel the same way, why not be a little closer? I know you'll have to leave soon, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy the time we have together. Sure. I think that'll make saying goodbye a little harder, don't you? Maybe. But we'll find a way to see each other again. What he's saying makes sense, but this whole situation has red flags all over it. <sighs> Having feelings for my abductor in a situation that's completely illegal is so wrong in so many ways. Amicus is talking about it like it could be an innocent fling, but this feels like more than that. The wolf has the same dejected look he'd worn when he came out to me a few weeks ago. So, I reach out a hand and rest it on his paw. He looks at me then, ears still low, but his expression hopeful. Everything's just so messed up and complicated. Yes, I'm a sorry. I shouldn't have kissed you. Maybe not. I swallow. But I liked it. <laughs> Amicus snaps his eyes back up to look at me. Really? Yeah. The wolf lets out a huge sigh of relief. You didn't kiss back, though. It worried me I'd made a mistake once again. I was surprised is all. What do you mean, once again? The wolf seems to contemplate something, then turns on his side to finally facing me. About five years ago, I shared my first kiss with another male. Oh? At the time, there were rumors that I'd performed poorly with a female my father had arranged me to be with. Oh... Amicus's ears turn red. Anyway, so this male approaches me during the summer festival. He was the son of one of the triumvirs of Triceli. He made it very clear what he wanted from me. He kissed me on the balcony while a covert drone recorded the exchange. It was broadcast on the information channels the next day. I frown. Why? Amicus shrugs, looking down at the sand. The triumvir had to pass a grievance with my father. He used mine and his own son's sexual preferences to get back at him. What happened then? Well, father used his power to shut down the networks along with banishing the Triumvir and his family to Ancoris. Amos nods up at the sky where Ancoris looms monolithically in its faded, chalky grey. It was an unpopular decision, but the father felt it had to be done. Obviously, it's left me a bit worried about kissing and pursuing other men. <clears throat> I squeeze his paw. Well, you don't have to worry about that with me, obviously. I don't know anyone here, and I'm trying to stay out of other people's business as much as possible. I know. Amicus squeezes back. I'm still sorry, though. I should have asked, or not done it. You're fine. Another stretch of silence, and I get the feeling that Amicus is waiting for an answer. Which he confirms with what he says next. So, if you're fine with it, did you want to date me? Amicus says the foreign word very carefully, and for a moment the linguist skips a beat in its steady translation, allowing him to speak the word unfiltered. It's still his voice, but the heavy accent that comes through is surprising, even a little sexy. Who doesn't find the deep Italian voice sexy? I know I should say no, though. The red flags fluttering ominously around a precarious, even dangerous situation. I'll think about it over the next few days, then let you know. Amicus smiles a little. Okay. 
but you need to be focusing on the trial. So no thinking about this while I'm deciding. Of course! I groan inwardly as I realize I've just added another distraction to the wolf's goal of becoming emperor. <laughs> you promise this won't distract you? Definitely not! I give the wolf a look of disbelief as he responds with a glare. Marco, I've wanted this my entire life. I know it may not have seemed like it earlier, but I'm taking this very, very seriously. And I won't be a distraction. Of course not. In fact, I would... In fact, I think it would be rather positive for me to know that you return my feelings to some degree. Gives me even more confidence. Oh god, no. Hey. Amicus sets upon my shoulder, and it looks like he wants to lean in and kiss me again, but he doesn't. Thank you for understanding and putting up with me. I have a good feeling about, well, everything now. <laughs> I don't know how much I agree, considering our situation is causing us so many problems, but I set my hand on his paw anyway. Sure. Our relationship after that conversation is strange, to say the least. I can assume. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just checking my Discord messages for right now. <laughs> so I reckon what we're going to read next is probably going to be the last little bit that we read for tonight. Hmm. We will have gotten through a lot tonight in terms of where we are once we're done. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Spicy. Well, it felt meaningful at the time. I realized later we didn't really get anywhere except once again admit to the feelings we've been having over the past few weeks. <clears throat> Amicus is extra careful about touching me now, probably because he doesn't want me to misconstrue it for something more than it is. At the same time, our conversations have become less casual and joking, more stiff and awkward. I hate it. In any other situation, I want to just sit down and talk my feelings out with the person, but Amicus is different. First of all, he's an alien. Having the feelings that I do for an alien, a wolf alien at that, is weird. Secondly, this relationship, this closeness, it's just not important in the grand scheme of things. We're currently trying to do something so illegal that, if it were to be found out, it could bring the entire Empire to a standstill. At least more than it already is. So instead of playing out... One of those cheesy woven romance dramas I've seen on a dastard television. Maybe instead I should be focusing on how the hell I'm going to exist in this empire, especially if the second trial falls through. But. Ambicus wants a relationship with me. That much he's made clear. I just wonder if it truly would help him like he says it will, or if he's just saying that so I'll give him what he wants. I don't doubt that the wolf likes me. Maybe even more than that, but we've only known each other for about a month. Do we really even know anything about each other? <clears throat> Despite all of this, and after a few days of thinking about it, I start to warm up to the idea. We both know it'll be a short, innocent fling, like I'd thought of it earlier. I could be leaving for Earth any time in the next month, but I can't deny that I really like him too. An innocent fling. The more I say that in my head, the better it sounds. Despite everything, knowing that I could have a relationship with an alien, the son of an emperor, actually someone who will likely become the emperor, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Besides, he did say it would help him with his confidence for the trial. And finally, I'm tired of this awkwardness between us. Amicus is my friend, and I want to be able to talk normally with him again. I'm pretty sure making things official will clear everything up. <laughs> 
I just have to go about it in the right way. Oh no. Oh no. I know what's- hang on a sec. I know what's coming up. Um... Oh god, I need to get ready for this. I need to get ready for this. Uh, oh boy. Okay. Uh, are we gonna get a rap god emotion moment? Maybe. Um. There, where's my boy? There's my boy. <clears throat> okay, that's a little bit too much Zizek, but um, I I need this to be I I, I need I need Zizek to be able to help me out here. Okay, Ziz, you think you can help me? Think you can help your old pal Moshe? <laughs> Ziz, you think you can do that for me? Okay, that should be enough. This is Slovenian phil uh, philosopher Slavoj Zizek. Um, I think we might actually get a sex scene. There's only three in this entire thing. We might get to the first one tonight, if this is what I think it is. Sorry, Jizz. You gotta go away for now. You'll be back, though. <laughs> oh, boy, you'll be back. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> the day before the trial, Amicus shoes me and Alex out into the gardens. It's strange, but he tells us that they need to be tending, tended to, considering that the camera drones are going to sweep over the grounds for an opening shot before the second trial begins. It's the first time he's ever really asked me to do a task, and when I point that out to him, he says that he also needs time alone to practice his speech. That makes sense, but it's still a little odd. Alex and I stand in the gardens, picking at the weeds just like I had on my first day at the palace. It's hard to believe a month's gone by, even with the nine, even with the 19-hour days. I guess it's been about three weeks in Earth time. I get to work pulling up the small white flowers, the ones that seem to grow in every crevice of the garden. You'd think the drones would be smart enough to take care of the weeds themselves. Well, they don't have appendages to pull with. All they could really do is use their high-powered lasers, but that risks starting fires. The drones have lasers? Oh yes, they need some form of defense mechanism. Huh. I mean, it's not like they'd ever use it on you. Even if they did, it's not enough to kill you. At least not quickly. Just leaves nasty burns. I find myself continuing to glance up at an adastrian spider sitting motionlessly on the wall of the palace. Wish they'd use them on those hideous things. It takes Alex a moment to see what I'm looking at. Oh, Marco, you know those are important for the... Ecosystem, yeah, I know, doesn't make them any less disgusting. Imagine one of those things biting you. Indeed. Though honestly, I've been vaccinated so many times after coming to Adastra that sharp, pointy things don't scare me so much anymore. We work quietly for a few more minutes, Alex lazily humming as I try to think of a way to bring up something that I want to talk about with the cat. So... So? Watch as Alex's paws work fast, plucking the weeds with speed and precision. What's your relationship with Cassius like? <clears throat> I see Alex's paws freeze for a moment, then quickly return to their work, the dirty pile of weeds next to him growing larger and larger on the marble floor. Our relationship? You already know that, Marco. I'm his pet, just like you are Amicus's pet. He smiles at me. At this point, I decide to stop letting the cat play his little game with me. I give him a look that says, oh, come on, and I see his ears, his ears fall a bit. What? You know exactly what. I think it's pretty obvious the two of you are, I don't know, something more. 
This is the first time I've called out the cat. Uh, this is the first time I've called the cat out on his polite pet facade, and I see that it's thrown him off a bit. His ears are down, and he's staring hard at his paws, pushing through the weeds, though he's no longer plucking them. That's such a forward question, Markle. I wonder if his demeanor just has to do with his cat modesty, or if there are actual laws against pet master relationships. Come on, we're friends. Besides, I want some advice. Now his ears perk up a little bit. Oh? We what? Well, first I want to know if, you know, something's going on between you and Cassius, then I'll know if you can answer. Alex sighs huffily and sits back on his fear, looking a bit childish with his legs and feet splayed out in front of himself. I don't know why it matters. Well, I don't know how things are on Omorpha, but where I'm from, friends talk about their relationships with each other. It's actually strange not to tell your friend about who you're in a relationship with. Though his ears are folded down, I can see how red they are. We're not in an official relationship, but there are feelings between us, yes. <laughs> really? Alex snaps his gaze to mine. Why do you sound so surprised? I'm not surprised, just fascinated. I'm not. You two are just really different. How so? I mean, do I have to explain it? Alex is quiet. Well, you're so reserved and quiet, and he's so... Now that I know Alex actually likes Cassius, I don't want to be too offensive. Cassius. Alex sighs. Yes, Cassius is very Cassius. But there's a lot more to him than what he puts out in public. So you like him? Part of him, yes. Alex has lowered his voice to the point where I almost can't hear him, so I do the same. So are you, like, in a relationship? I don't know what they're called on Adastra. Alex bristles. Well, it's simply called a relationship. The only official status is marriage. But that's only between males and females. What about between males? There, are, there is not. Why are you so curious? Alex looks at me carefully, eyes narrowed. I shrug. Just wondering. I like to learn about the culture I'm in. I see. Are you interested in Amicus? Now it's my turn to blush. I... no. Marco, you can tell me. I thought we were friends. I get the feeling that Alex is a lot better than me at these games. I, I don't know, honestly, but I guess I was wondering how I'd go about it if I decided to. Oh, that's adorable. All I can do in response is blush a deeper shade of red. So you're asking how to tell a wolf that you're interested? Yeah. Well, between males, it usually happens naturally without saying so. If you hadn't noticed, there's stigma against same-sex relationships on Adastra. <laughs> Laser room boss, you're goddamn right. Leaving the status of a relationship unsaid makes it less likely you'll be found out. I think for a moment, Amicus seemed to want me to make the relationship official. I guess he's just going by my standards then. He probably wants me to ask him on a date. Earth style. Alex goes back to plucking some of the weeds. However... I feel that things are changing, but very slowly. Honestly, someone like Amicus becoming Emperor would be really something. But to ask Alex how prominent the rumors are about Amicus when suddenly I hear footsteps. When I suddenly hear footsteps. I look up, half expecting to see the wolf, but instead... Kato simply stares at us, his paws behind his back as usual. A moment of silence goes by before Alex suddenly stumbles to his feet, paws clasped in front of him before bowing low. I quickly follow suit a few seconds behind the cat. As I bow, I no as I bow, I notice how dirty my robe is at the knees. Alex remains bowed, so I do the same listening as Cato's footsteps come closer. He stops a few feet away, and I can see his worn, blunt claws at the top of my vision. He stands there for a very long time, not saying anything, forcing me and Alex to remain stooped. As my back starts to ache, I realize he must be doing this on purpose. Are we in trouble for something? Finally, he speaks, and I almost jump. <coughs> Alexios, Marcos, how are you this afternoon? Alex straightens up when I do the same, stifling my groan of relief. If Alex is sore, he's not showing it at all as he fixes a smile on his face. Wonderful, your Imperial Majesty. I hope the same is for you. I open my mouth, trying to think of something to say, though Alex didn't leave me much room to do so. It doesn't seem to matter, though, as Cato starts speaking, reminding me I'm still supposed to be a near-mute primitive. Sadly, no, Alexios. I was just in the city today. I was hearing some unfortunate rumors among the officials. Another long pause. Oh? 
The corner of Kato's mouth twitches, and while I usually have a hard time knowing what the old wolf is thinking, I can tell right now he's not happy. Indeed. Rumors about Cassius and his intentions involving the Triumvirates if he becomes Emperor. It takes me a moment to realize what they're talking about. Then I remember... The Triumvirates? I wonder why... Alex puts on a very innocent, confused look, even though I know that he knows what this is about. I wonder as well, which is why I'm curious to know if either of you have heard the rumor, or possibly the source of the rumor. Immediately, I feel sweat start to break out on my forehead, and I'm glad I'm already sweating from the heat. I am sorry to say I do not know your Imperial Majesty. Another moment of silence goes by. That's when I notice Kate is waiting for me to answer. I choke on my words for a moment, adjusting my brain to dumb ape mode. Oh, uh, what is Trimverites? Kato's mouth twitches again. Anyway, I'm on my way to Cassius's room to let him know the news. Please accompany me, Alexios. Yes, Emperor. Alex quickly hops to attention as Kato turns with a twirl of his robes, heading back up the path as Alex quickly follows. I'm left to stand there alone for a moment, watching the two of them disappear amongst the bushes. So, someone had told some of the officials about Cassius' plans to eliminate the Triumvirates. Despite Alex's innocent act, I assume it had to be him. Either that or it was Virginia. I wonder if Kato was already suspicious about Alex, and if that's the case, if it could all come back to me... I hope not. The idea of playing politics amongst these passive-aggressive wolves is not at all appealing. I spend a few more hours weeding the gardens on my own, knowing I won't be able to make much, pro much progress alone. After a while, I meander around the gardens a bit, wanting to go back inside but not really wanting to bother Amicus while he studies. While I'm doing that, though, I think more and more about what Alex and I have been talking about. Should I just confess my feelings to Amicus and close the awkward gap between us? I know it's weighing on his mind. Maybe asking him out will give him that boost he needs to win? Maybe I'm just trying to convince myself, but I realize that it is something I want to do. I'm going to do it. Best to do it before the trial, to set his mind at ease. Carefully, I pick a few flowers from the gardens, not making the giant bouquet that Amicus has made for his own proposal, but enough to look nice, at least in my opinion. As I walk to the wolf's room, I have enough time to second-guess myself. Maybe this isn't such a good idea. My heart is hammering on my chest as I approach the wolf's door, and I'm sure my face is bright red. Yep, this is the scene I think it is. Uh, Professor Zizek, I'm going to need your assistance here. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Are, are, are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> I try to keep my breathing under control as I stand in front of the door. What should I say? Maybe just imitate what the wolf did back when he asked me out? Yeah, that'll be funny and cute, right? As I start to feel myself getting cold feet, I just reach up to the panel, pressing it, deciding to just throw myself into this. Whoop! <sighs> There it is, boys! There it is! Amicus is plowing Neferu. Oof, I mean, really giving it to him. The scene I come upon is probably the last one I would have ever expected. At first, I think the two of them are fighting. Nefero and Amicus obviously have some kind of tension going on between them, and so, that seeing, so seeing the jackal splayed out on the bed while Amicus growled and snarled above him, pinning him down, well, a fight is all that would come to mind. But after a few seconds of staring open-mouthed at the scene in front of me, I slowly realize what's actually happening. While Amicus might be snarling, Nefero is letting out grunts and groans that are clearly full of pleasure. His face and body say it all, too. The jackal writhing and twisting under the wolf, pawing at him as he says words that don't translate through the lingua. Yeah. 
If that isn't enough to tell me exactly what's going on, the jackal's slick pink cock bouncing against his tightened abs is. I guess the sounds they're making covered up the sound of the door opening, because neither of them look up. Instead, they both continue to go at it while I stare in shock. A part of me doesn't want to make any sudden sort of movements as to not attract their attention while the other part of me just stares in fascination, never having seen anything like this before. A few times Nefera tries to reach up and touch Amicus's face, and each time the wolf bats it away or pins the paws down. Amicus seems irritated almost like he's more annoyed about the situation than anything else. Nefera is practically the opposite, somehow maintaining that trademark smirk of his while this is all going down. Oh, and they nut. And they not. That's the nut. That's the nut. Mm, that's not. <sighs> and then, of all the moments for me to walk in on their little session, they seem to reach their peak. Pharaoh lets out a series of short moans, a strange sound coming from someone as refined and reserved as he is. I can see the results as it splatters against his torso and muzzle, his hips jerking frantically as his face morphs into a look of strained pleasure. Meanwhile, Amicus's moan is long and deep as he thrusts harder into the jackal, freezing up before practically melting over the other canine. Is there actual coom depicted visually? Yes, airport. Yes, there is. His expression is a lot more goofy, and despite myself, I find myself thinking this is exactly how I'd imagined his orgasm face. I just sort of take this all in, still trying to understand what the hell is going on. I mean... I know what's going on, but I don't know why. There's a certain amount of horror that goes with my reaction, as if I just w walked in on my parents doing it. I guess I'm at least glad that I'm seeing it at this angle, which means I can't see what's going on under an affair's hips. I realize that I need to get the hell out of... I need to get the hell out before they see me. As they both gasp in their sticky mess, I slowly start to back up, but that's when the door automatically closes behind me. Now that things are quiet, nothing covers up that sound, and affair and Amicus both look up at me. I stand there, feeling as if I'm in a dream as they both stare at me. I must look like an idiot, my dirty robe from the gardens, flowers dangling on my right hand, my mouth hanging open in fascinated horror. Amicus looks most shocked of all, and I can see a million thoughts running through his head clearly and not having wanted me to see this. His reasons for sending me and Alex out to do menial yard work is very clear now. Neferu, for his part, isn't wearing his usual suave smirk. Instead, it's surprised and maybe even a little guilty. Like, not even he wanted me to see this. I open my mouth. I... But any will to smooth over the situation somehow, make a joke of it even, leaves me. With both of their eyes on me, I turn and almost run into the door, having to drop the flowers on the ground to press the panel. Somehow, I feel even worse than I had when I'd left the throne room in disgrace after the dance. The door slides open, and the next thing I know, I'm jogging out into the hall. As I do, I hear Amicus struggling for words. Marco, wait! There's some rustling around, followed by a yelp from Nefera before the door slides shut, and the only sounds are my echoing footsteps. I'm not sure where I'm going. Uh, let us... Uh, first off, thank you, Professor Zizek. Uh, I really appreciate you. And, no, we're, we're gonna need that still. Zizek, thank you for your services. Uh, let us continue. Ewoo, you're goddamn right, airport. Horny. We are horny. Today, 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 my friends, we are horny. I'm not sure what's... I'm not sure where I'm going. I just know that I need to get as far away as I can from that situation. What I just saw is only now sinking in, and so is the hurt. What the fuck? That fucking wolf tells me he's in love with me, or at least interested in me, and the next thing I know, he's fucking the jackal? What the fuck? I guess I'm more angry than hurt. I must have looked like such an idiot standing there while one of them was getting railed. And to walk in on that moment. And Pharaoh had been so clearly into it and Amicus looked so mean and aggressive. The whole thing was just awful. Awful to walk in on unexpectedly. In another context. My vision blurs for a moment, but I refuse to let myself cry over something that wasn't even going to be serious. I was going to offer Amicus that stupid fling and that was it. He wasn't obligated to have eyes only for me. In fact, I knew he was into Neferu. We'd already discussed it. So this is fine. This was expected. Actually, I wasn't even expecting anything. No, the reason I'm so embarrassed to feel like shit right now is because I'd walked in on two alien dogs butt-fucking. That was weird and messed up, and I just need to collect my thoughts for a moment. That's when I realized I don't know where I am in the palace. 
Most of the hallways look the same, and this one is no exception, though I know I'm deeper in than I've been before. Marco! Amicus's footsteps pound against the floor behind me. I don't know how far away he is, considering the echoing halls can be deceptive, but I immediately take a right through a particularly large set of double doors. <laughs> the room I walk into is full of smells. Good ones, like a garden. The air is cool and fresh even as afternoon light pours in from an opening in the ceiling. All the while, there is the sound of a soft trickling from the water. Water from a small fountain in the center of the room. I stand there for a moment, eyes scanning for anyone else that might be here. When I don't see anyone, I move closer to the center of the room, looking around at the flowers and plants as I try to calm my hammering heart. I know Amicus is probably going to find me soon. All he has to do is ask calm. So I fold my arms, trying to look casual, realizing now that it would have just been better for me to hang out in the hall, maybe laugh when Amicus came out. I'd have made a joke and acted like it wasn't a big deal, but it's way too late for that now. Sure enough, the door slides open and Amicus stumbles in his underwear, his fur completely messed up, chest heaving for breath. Okay. Uh, we can remove the oh no, because our boy is now fully clothed. Marco, I need to talk about... He doubles over, paws on his knees as he gasps for airs. Gasps for air. I cringe as I see my flowers clutched to one of his paws, but I still try to look casual, keeping my arms folded. What? About what you just saw. Don't worry about it. I shrug before, busying myself with brushing off my robe so they don't look so dirty. No, I want to explain what happened. You don't need to explain. It's none of my business. Well, it is. It's definitely not. I snapped at the wolf. Who you fuck is none of my business. That's all up to you. Don't let me tell you who you can and can't be with. Amicus frowns deeply at me. What? You heard me. I don't want to hear about it. I'm not here for the shit anyway. Here for what? For... I throw my hands up in frustration. What just happened? For sex or love or whatever the hell it is you guys do. Whatever it is you told me you wanted on the island. I point at the flowers in his paw. I'm just trying to get home. I feel my eyes threatening to water up again, and I stubbornly swallow that down right quick. No, that's not what that was. Please let me explain. I shake my head. You guys, have sex. It's not a big deal. I get it. Humans can be like that, too. Amicus takes a step forward, but I take one back. I guess it's just a little fucked up that you confessed your feelings two days ago, and suddenly you're just fucking another guy. This is also ridiculous. Not only the situation I'm in, but the fact that I feel so hurt by the wolf, even though nothing has really happened between us, except an alcohol fueled kiss. Amicus takes another step forward, his paws up, staring wide-eyed at me. That's not what happened, and if you'll let me explain... Then what did I just see? What you saw? It was more of a transaction than anything. What, of cum? It's my favorite line of the whole fucking visual novel. I knew it was... <laughs> I'm so happy. But her line, it was a transaction. What, of cum? Yes, I love that. <clears throat> Amicus chokes in surprise. Well, yes, I guess. But I made a deal with the Kimian. What deal? Well, <clears throat> I'm sure you remember our problems with Cassius. About him wanting to murder me. Yes, that problem. What about it? Well, I did say it wasn't something you should worry about, but like I also said, I'm taking all precautions. Yeah? Yes, so... The wolf pauses. What? I realize now I should have consulted you on this, but it was my only immediate option. What option? Well... While Cassius might be willing to execute my pet, he wouldn't dare touch the pet of a Kimian. What? The wolf rubs behind his neck with one paw and speaks very quickly. If I were to lose the second trial, I made it so that your ownership would transfer to Nefer. You'd become his pet. I stare at the wolf. This would ensure that Cassius would not dare come after you. If he did, it might upset the very delicate relations we have with the Kimians. A moment of silence passes. So I become the Pharaoh's pet. If I somehow lose the trial. Yes. I stare at the wolf. Are you okay with that? Uh, no, sorry. Wrong fucking, wrong voices. 
Are you okay with that? I guess. Again, with him doing things without even telling me. No conversation, no warning, no consideration. After all this time, he still doesn't see me as an equal. Amicus sees my expression change and quickly jumps in again. It's the best alternative, mainly because the Kimians likely use their own stretch. Nefera would be able to get you home if he had to. So you pay him. He wanted sex and only seemed interested in that yes. Trust me, I took no emotional pleasure in it. I'm quiet. Don't worry though. I made sure the contract we agreed to ensures that you will not have to be involved in anything like that. In fact, you'd almost be treated like a pharaoh. Amicus grins proudly. I stare at the wolf for a while, suddenly feeling numb. Are you feeling better? His voice takes on a serious tone as he reaches out and pushes a thumb pad across my cheek. The action is intimate and I turn my head away. We stand awkwardly for a moment and Amicus holds up flowers. Uh, you dropped these. I shake my head. They were for you. Amicus winces. I thought, so were you going to ask me? I feel my face getting hot. Yeah, but now I'm suddenly enveloped in a very tight hug. God, it was the absolute worst moment for you to walk in. I'm sorry. I stand there limp, just letting the wolf hug me. Finally, Amicus steps back, holding the slightly wilting flowers as he stares at them. I hope that after you're still considering... I sigh and shake my head, to which Amicus's ears fall flat. I'm just a stupid primate to you, aren't I? What? I told you before to just talk to me. If you're planning something that involves me... Why couldn't you at least give me a warning? Especially for something like this! I... I... You what? It was sudden, and I thought the idea might hurt you after what happened on the island. No shit! So you went behind my back? I know sometimes you don't... well, you don't even think. But you knew this would hurt. No, I've been so busy. Not to mention negotiating these things is complicated. I'm just trying to do what's best for you, without really thinking about me, or how I might feel about any of this. I'm always thinking about you, every dumb hour of the day, and this is on top of the trials. Believe it or not, Marco, I'm stretched a bit thin. It would be helpful if you would work with me. Work with you how? Let you manipulate me into becoming your boyfriend? Watch you fuck another guy so I can become his slave instead? I've been pretending, but now could actually become official. I can't stop the words from spilling out of my mouth, wanting to hurt the wolf just as much as he hurt me. Manip you! The, word. the wolf stares at me. Then Amicus's hackles rise, but instead of instilling any sort of fear in me like it normally would, I feel satisfaction. Marco, I will not have you accusing me of such a thing. I was more honest with you on the island than I've been with anyone in years. But not about what just happened with the pharaoh. What? You think I owe you celibacy? We're not dating and you refuse to do anything with me. It may come as a surprise to you, but even in times like these I have needs. I don't know how it can get more ridiculous than that yet. It's pretty ridiculous. So you did want it. Amicus looks about ready to explode and for a moment he just stands there in silence, practically shaking. He opens his mouth and instead of the shouting I expect, it's almost a whisper. I may not know how these things work on Earth, but you know how they work on a Dastra. You said yourself these matters are casual. What happened with the Jackal means nothing to me. You mean so much to me. That is why I did it to keep you safe. I shake my head. While seeing what happened to the bedroom hurt, it's really the only, only the tip of the iceberg with what's wrong with all of this. If you actually cared about me, you'd care about what I want. You keep telling me how smart I am, but here we are again with you doing stuff without any of my input because you think I'm too stupid to understand. No! You know, you wolves are all the same. We're all just stupid barbarians to you. You don't treat me as an equal. You look down on me. And why the fuck would I want to be with someone like that? That is not even! Just win your stupid trial and send me home. If you don't, just blast my stupid ass off into space. I don't want to be here anymore. I turn, heading for the door. Wait, please! Whatever he was going to say suddenly cuts off as I hear a loud thud. I don't look back to see what he kicked or punched. Instead, I head out to the hall, not sure at all of where I'm going. I just know that I hate everything about what just happened.
For a while, I just wander. I end up pacing the halls of the palace before going outside to sit in the gardens. I don't see anyone. It's weirdly calm outside, especially considering that the Emperor could be decided tomorrow. I wonder how things are in the city and the rest of the Empire. I look outward towards the faint city skyline, glinting gently in the afternoon light. Amicus doesn't come after me. Should he? I said such horrible things to him. Even now, I feel like I had to say them. I'm tired of being treated like an actual pet, and now that I might actually become one. Still, I kind of wish he did come after me again. I do believe he was only trying to protect me, that he thought what he was doing was the only way to do that. But after everything on the beach, after I'd already told him to just keep me in the loop, honestly, if he'd asked me about it at first, even just told me about it, I'd probably have been okay with it. Sure, maybe a little jealous, but okay. I realize that a lot of this anger is just because I feel betrayed, and I feel that way because I really, really like Amicus. I'd expected him to treat me better after everything. Late summer afternoon, heat is making me sweat, but instead of going inside, I just move under some shade. After a while, I lay back on the bench I'm sitting on, drifting off to sleep. When I wake up, it takes me a while to realize where I am. I stare at the flowers and leaves, simply lit up by the garden lights until I'd remember and I'd fallen asleep here. Groggly, I call out for comment. According to him, I've only been out for about two hours, but the sun here always moves fast across the sky. I brush a few leaves off my robes as I get up and walk toward the palace, realizing at this point I can't exactly avoid going back to Amicus's room forever. At least it'll force us to talk about things after we'd cooled down. At least, I hope he's cooled down. The pace starts to slow as I get closer to his bedroom, unsure of what to say after everything that had happened. I decided I'm going to apologize, but also expect an apology from him as well. We both made mistakes, but we could get past this if we talked it out. Dinner is still sitting next to the door on its cart, untouched. I pause, my hand hovering over the panel, remembering what I saw the last time I opened this door. Shuddering, I steel myself and press it. The room is empty. No wolf in sight. Cold air creeps out of the room, chilling my bare calves as I continue to stand in the hallway. I realize that I was holding my breath, and I let it out slowly. I look up and down the hall in case I might see Amicus, but as always, it's empty. With a soft sigh, I slowly walk in towards the bed, before changing direction to sit on the sofa instead. Kama told me that it was the 18th hour, which means Amicus should be getting ready for bed by now, a schedule he follows almost religiously. Maybe he's getting ready for the trial somehow? That would be good, but I'm also getting the uncomfortable feeling that he's just avoiding me. That would be bad, because despite what happened, he shouldn't be thinking at all about me. He could be the Emperor tomorrow. So I sit there, hugging a pillow, waiting. After a while, I grab the food from the hallway and manage to eat a little bit. I wonder if I should save some for Amicus, but decide that he'd be able to get his own food from the kitchens instead of these cold leftovers if he ends up returning. So I send the rest back with the drones and continue waiting. After a few more hours, Amicus still doesn't come back and I end up laying down on the sofa, waiting to fall asleep. The sound of the door opening jolts me awake, and I quickly sit up, turning to look. Amicus? Oh no, it's the bad boy! It's the bad boy! I stare at the jackal for a moment, feeling a sudden surge of anger in my chest. Oh, hello, Mark. Mark. Right, where's my voice for him? <sighs> hello, Marco. Are you not coming to the trial? I look around. What time is it? It is seventh hour, which means the trial starts in less than an hour. Where's Amicus? I'm preparing for the trial. He hasn't been back all night. He was meditating most of the night. All night? Indeed. I frown at the jackal. What do you want? The pharaoh walks further into the room slowly before stopping in the middle a good fifteen feet away. To escort you to the trial, if you'd like. And also to talk. About what? I've already told you. You don't need to play stupid with me, Marco. I sit up straight, turning to face the jackal more directly. I'm not. I'm just wondering why the fuck you have the nerve to show up 
you have taking advantage of Amicus like that. What? I don't think I've ever seen Neferu caught off guard, so the sight is kind of funny. I smirk. Well, that's certainly a way to look at it. What other way is there to look at it? Plenty, if you'll let me explain. I sit back on the sofa, crossing my arms. Amicus already explained. I become your pet to protect me from Cassius, and in exchange for that, you made him fuck you in the ass. Again, the jackal looks shocked and then laughs, the sound high and soft. <laughs> oh dear, there are many ways to look at this aunt there. The suddenly cheerful mood irritates me. Listen, I honestly don't want any part of this. Yes, but you already are part of it. Whether you want to be or not, so please allow me to explain some things. I don't say anything, keeping my arms folded, my expression bored. The jackal seems to take this as his cue to continue. Amicus approached me about this deal a week ago, shortly after the incident with Cassius. It seemed simple enough, and I had to agree with him. Your position in this power struggle is becoming ever more precarious. I raise an eyebrow. How so? The rumors about Cassius's intent to disband the triumvirates have saturated the trial even though Cato has banned all discussions of it. <laughs> Word is that Cassius has realized who might have started the rumors. Nefero looks pointedly at me, but I try to keep my expression neutral. This has implications for you, obviously. But not only you, because you possibly sabotaged his chances at the throne. I feel my stomach turn a little, realizing I've gotten myself into way more than I'd ever intended. This also brings into question your intelligence. Far too intelligent for a simian, wouldn't you say? I open my mouth, but Neferu goes on. Now, with all of this considered, it was only natural for Amicus to come to me for help. Your life is in danger, Marco. No matter the facade these peaceful palace holds might project. I stare at the jackal, surprised at how candid he's being with me. He asked me what I wanted most, and I answered truthfully, an alliance with the wolves if Amicus were to become emperor. Of course, he declined outright, as he should have as the prospective emperor. How could he promise something so important, with so many implications all over one pet? So, knowing that was impossible, I offered something a bit more selfish on my part. Copulation with the handsome son of a wolven emperor. To this, he only needed a few moments to agree. I grimace. But I want you to understand something, Marco. If Amicus had found even that disagreeable, I would have simply asked for nothing. It is the duty of Archimedes to protect any sapient fleeing wolven violence, whether they be sibling, child, or abandoned. Pet ownership is illegal where I'm from. And the idea is quite disgusting, don't you agree? The pharaoh glances at me. But wolves love their contracts. And no matter how different Amicus might wish himself to be, he is still a wolf. He despises the idea that he might owe something to Achimian. And his quickness to accept the deal showed me that despite how much he wanted to not want to fuck me, as you put it, there was a part of him that did. In the end, he was willing. I look away, frowning. And I think this is something that has caused a rift between the two of you. You must understand that sex is casual here. It means nothing more than indulging in our corporeal desires. It's one of the few cultural similarities we share with the wolves. I have been told that simians are more similar to cats, and that such things hold much more meaning. You are no longer on Simia and must understand that things are different here. Even if he wants to, which I believe he does, Amagus can't change his philosophy over the course of a single week. I finally find room to speak. You're acting like we're in a relationship or something. You aren't, but you want to be. Amagus loves you, it's clear as Vita, as they say here. I feel that little thrill in my chest and my face blushes furiously. Nefera goes on like he didn't actually just say that, though. 
So yes, if you don't like the idea of Amicus fucking another man, then claim him as your own man. I frown. Claim? I'm going by a world of in terms here. I'm sure you have your own. Did the pharaoh just ask me to ask Amicus out? Now, does that clear things up for you? Even though I just woken up, I'm already feeling exhausted. I, I guess there was a little more to it than that, though. Which I'm sure can be settled in the future. Civil discussions can do wonders. Now, we really must be getting to the trial. If you're wanting to go... Nefaru raises an eyebrow at me. I find myself shaking my head, but do not deny the jackal his request. Rather, it's because I don't know what the hell this guy is up to. I get up, and Nefaru offers his arm to me, which I stare at. Shall I escort you? This is something I'd seen the jackal do multiple times to Virginia and Alex. For some reason, he seems to really just enjoy escorting people around. After his little lecture, I can tell he's trying to smooth things over between me and Amicus. So reluctantly, I reach out and take his arm in both hands, if only to please him. And pleased he seems to be. A tugging at the corner of his muzzle making me think he's trying not to smile too much. As he guides me out the door, I find myself feeling out the fur on his arm. It's much more silky and smooth compared to Amicus's. Not quite as fluffy. It's not as nice as Amicus's coat, but it does feel nice in a different way. There's a lot of muscle there, too, and I wonder if the jackal works out in the amphitheater, though I've never seen him there. I guess I can see why so many people are into the guy. If muscles are your thing. As we continue through the halls, I notice we're taking a different route than the one to the throne room. Where are we going? To meet the star of the most asinine entertainment show in the galaxy. What better way to determine the fate of all things? siblings and parents alike than through meaningless woven spectacle. But the fairy pauses in front of a door, gently pulling away from me while his paw is held delicately up to the panel. What I'm saying is that quite a bit is depending on your wolf right now. He might need some encouragement. I'm still staring at the jack when he finally presses the panel, opening the door. When I look back, I find myself looking into a much smaller room. Simple and bare. Just a bed and a dresser. I just noticed this room looks startlingly similar to the room that we start the novel in. Like it's real close. The air is thick with the calming smell of incense as it creeps into the hallway and washes over me in a warm wave. And there, sitting on the bed, is Amicus. Before I can look back at Neferu, the wolf suddenly looks up. We both stare at each other for a moment, and the wolf is suddenly on his feet, stumbling toward me. He stops himself halfway across the room, though, paws clasped in front of himself. I've never seen him so disheveled before. His fur is stuck up all over his neck and shoulders, his cape is askew, his eyes are red and bleary. Before I know it, I'm walking into the room towards the wolf. Are you okay? Oh, fuck. Oh, bad. Oh, God, that's a bad earache. Fuck. Uh, God, I might, you know what, I think after this scene, like, just b before we get to trial number two, we're gonna, you know, I'm, I'm probably gonna end it there. Amicus tries to smooth his fur down, but it sticks right back up. I'm, I'm fine. I was the, just the meditating. You look awful. Isn't the trial in less than an hour? Yes. There's a moment of silence that goes by as I just stare at the wolf. Are you going, then? You should get ready. Marco. I stop, waiting. The pause is long, and when Amicus finally speaks, his voice is so quiet I can barely hear it. I don't think I was meant for this. My heart sinks. Meant for what? Everything in this damned empire. I've done absolutely nothing right. Everything has been handed to me on a platter my entire life. But the first time I actually have to fight for something. I know you don't think I took this seriously, but I did. I tried. I wasn't prepared, and you were right. I see a little wetness around his eyes, but he aggressively wipes at them with an arm. While weeks ago I might have welcomed this epiphany, this is the absolute worst moment for it. I couldn't even keep my best friend. I would have been a horrible emperor. It takes me a moment to realize that he's talking about me. Amicus. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you everything. But I treated you poorly. But I got you in this stupid mess in the first place. And that I can't get you out of it. The wolf's boy catches on the last part, and I wonder with some astonishment if I'm actually going to see him cry. But he manages to hold it together, looking down at the floor. I just want to do what was best for you. But I wasn't thinking of you when I did it. I was inconsiderate, and I'm sorry. Amicus stands there quietly, apparently finished. I don't know if this is more about me or about him feeling inadequate for the Emperorship. I have no doubt that a little fight yesterday caused it, though. Seeing the wolf like this, it hurts, but it also makes me kind of angry. This isn't the Amicus I know. I reach up, setting a hand on his shoulder, and he suddenly looks up at me. You're less than an hour away from becoming the Emperor. You need to act like it. What? You think your dad would have acted like this when he wasn't sure of himself? Your grandfather? Drusus? There's a time and a place, and now is not the time. I don't know if they would have, but I'm grasping at straws at this point. I... Now, honestly, this is a lot more about you, or me, or anyone here. This is about the lives of millions of sapiens, about your entire empire. You think it all deserves to go to shit because you're not really sure of yourself? You're such a good person, basically the opposite of what the society is, and you want to put that into your rule. That's amazing. But now you're suddenly willing to give up? What the fuck is wrong with you? you? Yeah, you made a bunch of mistakes. That doesn't matter now. What matters is you make sure that piece of shit brother of yours doesn't take the throne. So you better get your ass out there and beat the hell out of him in this stupid debate. I'm not sure what else to say, so I stop breathing hard. After a moment, I realize the wolf is smiling at me, and it takes me a moment to calm down from my Hollywood movie pep talk. But, I'm going to go out there, Marco, there's no doubt about that. I just was having a moment. I was trying to be more honest with you, but thank you. I frown. Well, you sure picked up a hell of a moment to have it. I know, I've just been having a terrible time after yesterday, so I needed to apologize to you. The debate, is water wet? That's a good question. I deflate a little, but there's some relief there too, seeing Amicus somewhat back to his old self. I, I forgive you, but this is a lot bigger than us right now. I know it is. What I'm feeling is a lot bigger than us as well. The wolf sits upon my shoulder. But I'm honest about what I said. I'm sorry. And I will never do anything involving you without your consideration again. And I will take your cultural differences into better consideration in the future. I look up at Amicus and his earnest, at his earnest face, and I find myself hugging him, and he hugs back tightly. We still need to talk about things, but we can do that later. You need to kick Cassius's ass first. I know. Amicus pulls back, both paws on my shoulders now. And I will. There's a gentle clearing of the throat behind us, and we both look back to see Neferu casually lounging in the doorway. If you are finished, the trial begins in 30 minutes. Immediately, Amicus scowls at the side of the jackal, but he nods. I'd better be going, then. So you're feeling better now? Much better, thanks to you. I smile as I feel a wave of relief, even though this is just like Amicus to be so easily cheered up. I allow the wolf to pull me towards the door. Deferi moves out of the way as we exit the stifling meditation room. All right, I'm on my way to a shower. I'll be watching. The rhetoric thing, I mean. Heh. <laughs> I'll look for you, and we'll talk after this? Yeah, we'll talk after your emperor. Alright. Amicus leans in to kiss me on the lips, then pauses before planting it on my cheek instead. With that, he winks, and turns and dashes up the hall, running at a full sprint. I hear a soft chuckle behind me. Well, that went rather well. I didn't think it would be half as easy. I glance back at the jackal as he basically reveals himself, reveals he's been planning this all along. I guess it was obvious. Shall we head to the throne room? They'll be wanting us sitting down early so they can film us. The whole thing is a dreary spectacle after all. Alright. With that, I follow the jackal towards the throne room, hoping that what I'd said to Amicus is enough to get him in the right headspace to help him win. In just a few hours, I'll know if I'll be leaving soon. Or staying for a long, long time. Either way, I'm just glad that this happened. Okay, um, 
Do you guys want to end here? Yeah. I think we're going to save here. Oh, Yek comes in just at the end. Hello, Yektan. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind doing it a little bit longer, but I've been streaming for a while, and it, I'm just I'm just tired now. Um, so <coughs> yeah, um, so in this very long thing, there's only three sex scenes, and we we got one of them today. I managed to successfully censor it out though, so I'm probably so I think I'm good. Um. I, uh, do we cage the furries? <laughs> Not soon enough! Anyway, um, I guess I have to do my thank yous now? Uh, and I will, what will I do? I'll shit. I'm gonna fucking shit. I'm not gonna shit. Um, I'm gonna move it to wrapping up because we're we're on the end here. So, uh, I want to thank everyone who came by today. I want to thank uh, my most recent followers, Death Punch Six Two Five and Lanky's Fifty Six MS. Thank you guys so much for following me. I'm going to follow you guys back, because that's what I do. I currently follow back everyone who follows me. Hooray. Uh... Airport won... No, Hotspur won the last uh, bit donation thing for last week. It's since been reset, so if people want to donate bits again, they are welcome to. Uh, a lot happened in Adastra this time. We, uh... We learned how to dance. We put on the tiger equivalent of blackface. Thank you, airport. Yeah, we put on the tiger equivalent of blackface and got our asses handed to us. And then, uh. Beats! And then, um. We, s we uh, discovered number numerous secrets, including obviously that Amicus is gay. And that Neferu is also gay. And that Alex is at Alex and Cassius are at the very least bi, possibly gay, because they got a thing for each other. Um Apparently all the gay wolves on Adastra are in this palace alone because like the rest of the country is really homophobic. Um the rest of the Empire rather. Uh we also learned a little bit about the history of the Adastrid Empire, and uh, we made some. Pre while we were making preparations for the second of the three trials, uh, we basically confessed feelings with Amicus. It was mutual. There was a kiss. It was cute. Um, we were going to like kind of try to make it official, but on the way to try to make it official, uh, we stumbled upon uh, Amicus and Neferu banging. Um, the TLDR of it is that, um, it was a, uh, part of a, uh, transaction, uh, to ensure Marco's safety, because if Cassius becomes emperor, he's going to try to kill Marco, and so, and this, the means of this is that, um, as p the sex being the payment... He, uh, Neferu agrees to take us off the planet if, or take us off the moon if everything goes to shit. So, uh, yeah, and, and then, you know, we, we had a big fight with Amicus about it because that's kind of like a, it was, it was kind of fucked up and he didn't tell us about this. And eventually, he, you know, Neferu explains it to us. We make up with Amicus. Um, we have a couple weird dreams, and now we're on to the second trial. Theoretically, according to the story, 
if Amicus wins this trial, he becomes the Emperor because, uh... What's-his-face would never do the third trial. Uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. Cassius could never do the third trial. But anyway, uh, I think that's all I got. Uh, yeah, I think that's all we got right now. <laughs> so, thanks to everyone who came by. If you liked what you saw tonight, does Cassius ever win Emperorship in any ending? That's too big of a spoiler, so I'm not gonna say. Uh, I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna say that. Be careful who you ask about it, because some of the other furries in the server might spoil it for you. But anyway, um... So, we... So, yeah, so... Thanks to everyone who came by. If you liked what you saw tonight, consider giving me a follow a friend or a subscribe. If you want to keep up with the channel more, see schedule, participate in streams, post memes, curate music, cyberbully me, and more, scroll down to the panel section, click the Discord button to join the Discord server. If you want to see um, the wide range of stuff we've done over the last two years, down there in the panel section there's also a YouTube button which you can click to take you to my YouTube archive. Uh, going forward, the next stream I believe is going to be on Friday. I might move it to Thursday, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be Friday. I'm going to be streaming fucking Lego Ninjago because y'all want me to do that and a friend gifted it to me and I guess we're playing Lego Ninjago now. I'm so bad at it, but we're going to have fun with it. Uh, details for timing and stuff can be found on the Discord, so join and check there if you're interested. Uh, before I pass you guys off... Um, do you guys want, uh, does anyone have any final thoughts on, uh, on what they saw tonight? Did you guys like the content? Did you like the voices? Did you, um, uh, you know, how, how, how'd you feel about stuff? Is this entertaining? Are you interested in seeing what happens next? Is this as, uh, exciting as you wanted it to be? Does Airport have anything to say other than that? Remember, man, you voted for this. This is this this is partially your doing, but I'm sure you know that. Uh, let me see here. I see my boy Vouch is uh, is streaming, and he started not that long ago, so he's probably going to continue to stream for a while. So I'm going to pass y'all off to Vouch. Uh, Vouch Vidya. Okay. What do you mean it isn't? The internet will vote for the stupidest question without fail. Well, yeah, but that makes it your doing. You were part of that. You were part of that. You were part of the stupidity. But in any case, um, yeah, I'm gonna pass you guys off to Vosh and you can watch an edgy boy talk about politics and video games. Uh... And I look forward to whenever we do a Daster next, and I'll see you guys all on Friday. I want to see everyone ready up. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's go raid. Let's go raid Vosh with my pesky five viewers. God damn it. Okay, boys. Let's go.